Hello, everybody. My name is Necroxus. I'm here with somebody you might not have heard on this channel ever, actually. We're doing a podcast uh, on both of our YouTube channels. I'm here with my friend Tyranor. Hello. Say hi. Hello. Hello. Way ahead of you. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. We have not been together since Boeth is lower, but now we are back together once again. Um, you might notice this is an audio format, so like I said, it's going to bounce between my channel and his channel on YouTube. And uh, all of the ancillary stuff, like where to go, all that'll all be messed with in the description. So right. um, we are going to be talking about today some of the our impressions of uh, 6.0, basically the entire story, what we thought of each zone. Um, and yeah, we're going to delve into a little bit of 6.1 and 6.2, even though that's not out yet, and just give our impressions, what we liked, favorite moments, yada yada yada. You know the drill. So uh, yeah. We're gonna start with Frostfire Ridge. You wanna, you want to tell me your thoughts on that? Um. Well, before uh, before we go to Frostfire, maybe uh, I really had a few thoughts about uh, the whole Tanan Jungle introduction and the uh, beginning event to the whole expansion. You know. With, oh, of uh, course. Yeah, in the Blasted Lands. Right. 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 I think that might have been the weakest, the weakest uh, start to an expansion since <laughs> ever, to be honest. Yes, I agree with you, one hundred percent. And uh, there aren't really any cool uh, moments or any. Uh, ev everybody seems to be uh, seemed to be treating the thing as it, as if, oh, the dark portal is opening again and another invasion force. So I guess that's normal. They weren't. Uh, there weren't any moments about say, mm. how how come there are orcs there, uncorrupted orcs? What is going on? Nothing like that. Yeah, it didn't seem like they could be bothered to even explain. Like, I mean, I know they had the short story, which I actually think Hellscream came out after Warlords launch, didn't it? I when they tried. Think so I think so. Yeah. And they, cause yeah, cause there really wasn't even an exit. It was kind of just like, oh no, there's orcs. <laughs> we gotta go down there, and you yeah. show up, and they're just like, there's orcs. It's like, A, why are they brown? B, why is Warlord Zayla there? They don't even, like, make a mention because she's flying there in front of the Dark Portal. They don't even feel bothered to, like, be like, hey, these are Garrosh's guys. Yeah. He did something. <laughs> they just, like, expect you to either know or not care enough is the impression that I got. I completely agree. And uh, I really was expecting at least a little bit of reaction from Thrall or Khadgar, but really the only... Uh, role that uh, Frawl had in, in that little event was uh, I guess things are happening go kill the things and Khadgar was basically I'm flying around and I'm mysterious yeah it's really weird for I mean I, I think I don't know if this is the case but it could be that they thought oh people really don't like how Thrall is involved with so much stuff mm. but this is one case where he should be like yeah. he, he should have like a strong opinion about it he doesn't really he's just kind of like hey I'm here because I, I, I'm obligated to be here because of who I am. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, comple I completely agree with that. Um, also, I was, I, I'm not sure where exactly I heard this, but initially I thought that, uh, you know, the Orc, the orc City uh, in Blasted Lands, Rockhard, or however the in-game name is, Mm -hmm. I initially heard that uh, they were going to join the Iron Horde, but instead they were conquered by it. Yeah, it was um, it was on the um, it was on the PTR because I remember it was like the original version, which is they betrayed the Horde and joined yeah. with Garrosh. Well, that that version of it was up for like an hour or two before they took it down, mm. and then they seemingly changed it. And I don't know why, because part of me thinks it might be because of the. I mean, it, this is just my opinion, and I could be wrong because I was so upset about it, but the negative reaction that came about <laughs> from just destroying Netherguard Keep, which is a relatively mm -hmm. important place in the lore, you know, yeah. canonically, in the history, like, for just willy-nilly destroying it just to pretend like the Iron Horde's powerful. Um, that might have been a response to be like, well, if the Iron Horde joins them, or they join the Iron Horde, maybe it's not as bad, but... I, don't, I think it would make more sense if they would have betrayed the Horde rather than just get steamrolled by them. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it was all very sloppy in the, in the first place, so... Yeah, I, I completely agree. Especially if you think about the Beyond the, Beyond the Dark Portal, and I'm basing my information mostly on the novels because I haven't played Warcraft, Warcraft 2. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, in the, in the novel, 
the orcs launch an attack on on other on other guard but they know they will never be able to c conquer it they just mean to distract the alliance while they they do their business and in the and in this version the orcs not only take nether guard keep but they also take another outpost at the same time yeah really and it's kind of like i know it's Netherguard wasn't built to watch like for the Iron Horde, but it was built to watch over the Dark Portal. Yeah, and it it the, it like failed at its one job that it was created to do. <laughs> so I was like, that's that was my problem with it when I first saw it because I was really upset about it. But my main gripe with it was Netherguard, you failed at the one job you were built to do. Yeah. So good job. Yeah, pretty much. Uh... But I'm. As we talk about more of the actual zone story, I think it ties into how much I think the intro was kind of stupid. Because the intro made it seem like the Iron Horde is so dangerous. But once you get to the end of 6.0 and Gould... I'm skipping like really far ahead. But once you get to the end of 6.0 and the Legendary where Gul'dan overthrows Grom and takes over. To me, I was like, wow, the Iron Horde was like nothing. Like they weren't a threat at all. They got yeah. defeated so easily. And it was just kind of like a disconnect between how they were initially presented and how badly they get steamrolled. I don't know. I completely agree, and I even have a few gripes about that per that particular event. Mostly, a lot of the story, this exp expansion felt rushed. Even though there were some really cool moments and some really nice characters, a lot of it felt rushed. And uh, I think I'm going to be making a lot of comparisons to... Wrath of the Lich King for two reasons. One, because it is my personal favorite expansion, and two, because the premise is fairly similar. The Alliance and Horde are invading a strange land to depose this one enemy. And mm -hmm. uh, in Wrath of the Lich King, yes, there were a lot of, a lot of flaws, but the story was uh, very well-structured, I would feel. It felt like, yes, we're gradually making progress towards killing the... Lich King rather than in Warlords where uh, I guess there's trouble in Gorgrand. Let's set up an outpost there and uh, do stuff, I guess. Well, it's particularly funny because, at least in my opinion, Vanilla and Burning Crusade, the storytelling in that was not good. Like, even yeah. now, I still don't understand why Illidan was the main villain in Burning Crusade. Yeah. It makes no sense if you actually look at the story. But so they went from that to Wrath where I feel like they did a really good job at Showing like, oh, you're you're winning a little, you're winning little victories against the scourge, but there's still like this overwhelmingly mm -hmm. nefarious group that you probably don't have a chance to beat. <laughs> Compared to like two, ex three expansions later where they have messed it up so badly, I don't know where it failed. Like I, I can't pinpoint a specific thing that I could note to be like, this is where they went wrong. I don't know if that's the same for you, but I feel like there was just a bunch of little problems in yeah. Warlords that all added up to a big. A big issue. But without going into, like, random specifics, do you want to start with Tanan Jungle so we don't just completely go wildly off topic? Yeah. Or do you want to... Uh, I cut you off? Do you want anything, anything, anything else to say about the uh, Wrath comparison? No, I, I imagine I'll make a few more comparisons as we, may, as we go along because there probably are a few parallels to be made. But uh, right. I'll save my final thoughts for the final thing. Oh, one more thing I wanted to bring up before we go to Tanan that kind of bothered me, and they've been doing it more lately. Um, I would say starting with Cataclysm. Places where I feel like there should be a divergence in the story between Alliance and Horde, hmm. um, there's not. Like, like literally, the Blasted Land story is copy-paste exactly the same uh, in the introduction to uh, Warlords. Like they, they, there's not even like fluff dialogue, if I'm remembering correctly, between Thrall and Murad or whoever the Alliance quest giver was. Like it was literally exactly the same. That's really lazy to me. Like there should be at least get get the perspective of Thrall on what's happening, get the perspective on Murad of what's happening. Don't just make them say the exact same thing. I actually noticed uh, something kind of similar today because uh, I found I finally picked up fishing on fishing on my, on my character and, and I started to do some. Fishing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some fishing dailies for uh, the Horde, because I I'm Horde. The mm. fisherman in the Horde garrison is a troll, but the quest text he gives you is perfect English. In perfect <laughs> English. <laughs> yep. You're going to see... Uh, I don't know. Have, how much have you actually played of Warlords? I don't actually know how much you've been uh, playing of. Uh, right, I probably should have. Probably should have established that. In the yeah, we probably should have established that. <laughs> I've been playing since launch, and I've been playing the entire time. That's how much I've been doing it. Well, I've kind of been playing since uh, about April. I've done 
uh, all of those zones, uh, I pretty much all done all, all of the quests on the Horde side. I, have, I haven't done the Alliance mm. yet, I'm afraid. So I have almost no experience with Shadow Moon Valley. Uh, ah. And, and uh, I've watched almost all of your videos uh, when it comes to the, the legendary quests and uh, the, PT, the PTR. And I'm also at the high most stage of the legendary quest. Ah, okay. Well, I mean, honestly, aside from Shadow Moon Valley, which is obviously different because it's an entirely different zone, yeah. it's really the same. <laughs> like, all of the other zones, unfortunately, are very similar. Mm. It's just it's just Yorel instead of uh, Duratan, I guess, is who the Horde usually talks to. Or Thrall. Or Drekfar. Right. Uh, do the Alliance have any... I mean, I know there's Marad and Irel, but... Uh... For for the horde, there's Zagra, there's Thrall, there's uh, Durotan, there's Drekfar. Uh, there's at least four characters that I, that I can think of that you continue to see for the alliance. How is it for the alliance? Um, well, that's actually one thing I did kind of like. Some of the characters that you see that are repeating are not old characters; they're new Draenei characters. Like mm -hmm. for example, uh, what's his name? It's like Ranger Dakan or something. He's like a, he's one of the higher up of the Rangari, who are like the Draenei scouts. Um, you see him kind of a lot. So he's one of them, Urel's one of them. Um, <laughs> Murad until he dies. Um, but, but after Murad goes, it's really a lot of it is it's Urel. Which I mean, I guess it makes sense because she's a new character. Right. Compared right. to where they're like Duratan, who you, he's technically new, but you know all about him and Agra. No, I don't know anyone who likes Agra, but that's just my perception of it. But. Yeah, a lot of it's Yorel. Hmm. Agra is a troll in disguise, we all know it. <laughs> uh, Indeed. We should probably start talking about Tanan. Yes. Uh, I personally... Uh, I, I found the little, the little cinematics at the beginning and the end to be... Uh, nice, so to say. Uh, and I found the theme and the simil similar... There's a lot of perils to be on the Dark Portal. I found the perils to be fairly entertaining, although releasing Gul'dan and the Shadow Council has got to be the stupidest <laughs> thing we've done. It's one of the most obvious, like, hey, let's pretend that we're not totally setting up the actual villain moment, I think, in the entire expansion. Because, I mean, honestly, even when we were doing But Wait, There's Lore, I brought this up in all my videos, I brought this up. Cadgar, you're releasing Gul'dan. You know Gul'dan. That's the dumbest thing you possibly could have done. Even my, he's my favorite character, and I was like, look, we just gotta kill him. Kill him while he's paralyzed, and then we have solved the entire expansion. Kill him, and then we just leave, and we win. Yeah. But, nope. <laughs> uh, one thing I did like about Tanan Jungle was, um, basically, in pretty much the entire, all, Almost all of uh, the quests so far in the other in the other expansions is you're just you're the main guy you're the savior of camp number forty seven you're the man who stopped the uh, burning legion invasion at this random place and stuff like that. I liked it in Tanan. Uh, yes, there is uh, still a lot of a lot of you go and do the shit, but you can see that everyone else is also sort of doing their part, even if it's just. Uh, let's stop the Iron Horde from coming back to Azeroth, or uh, uh, Khadgar opening a gate, or Khadgar busting a dam. Oh, let's be honest, Khadgar is the MVP in that intro. Yeah. Like, he's ridiculous and the stuff, like, freezing the entire arena, and, like, flooding Blackhand's entire, like, operation, and... Yeah. He's the, he's the real, <laughs> he's the real champ of that, of that introduction, but I, I, I agree with you, I mean... I, I've pretty much brought like only up negative points thus far, but I, I the intro I'm totally fine with the intro besides the free and Gul'dan, which was dumb. But you know the cinematics were fine, the little introductions to each warlord were fine. Um, yeah, I, I do like how, I, I do agree with you how every little character, if they didn't get their own chance to shine, they're in the background fighting. Like yeah. one of my favorite scenes is when you're, even though it doesn't really matter because you can't actually lose when you're shooting like 200 orcs in the cannon and you see, if you look down, you can see like literally every character down below fighting and they'll all do abilities every once in a while. Like Thrall will do Bloodlust and you'll see Murad do Paladin, whatever. I don't play a Paladin, but shiny light stuff. And you'll see Drek'dar shooting lightning. Um, it, it's definitely more, it definitely feels like a team effort, which yeah. is then really random, weird, rather weird when you get to the actual expansion where it's like, Commander! 
You're the leader. Go do all the grunt work and save everybody. Yeah, yeah this is... I'm sorry, I, I'm going ahead again, but this is my main gripe with, war, with war, war, Warlords. You don't feel like a commander, you feel like the champion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back to Tanan, one thing that I'm not sure exactly how I, how I felt was uh, how they basically shoehorned every Warlord in the beginning to basically to inter introduce them and I guess their theme even though they whatever uh, but it felt kind of like uh, a really shitty anime where they just throw <laughs> all the villains at you uh, in so the... you, have, you have to see them at least once before you go off to do your adventures yeah pretty much uh, yeah I, it definitely was weird seeing like four distinctly different like cultures I know they're all orcs but like the Shadow Moons, and then, like, mm. the Bleeding Hollow, and Black Hand's lava nonsense. It was definitely weird seeing all of them, like, forced into one little area. But, um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if, it's, if that's a negative or a positive. It definitely sides on the kind of cheesy angle, I think. Yeah. But, um, I don't know if it's good or bad. I think they're still trying to figure out how to make the villains who aren't, like, the ultimate villain. They're still trying to figure out how to make, like... Mm the zone villains seem more than they actually are. Because if we get into, like... We're, we're doing uh, Frostfire next, but to get to, like, Shadow Moon real quick... Nerazul, I mean, I know he's your favorite character. I think he's pretty mm -hmm. cool. But I don't know, man. When you see him in the intro and then you see him in the zone... I don't feel like he's that dangerous until... They force in that moment where Velen dies. Like, right. at once, like, that was really forced to me. So I don't... They're still trying to figure out how to do that. I don't know if they're ever going to figure it out. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the, the way to do it. Mm. But I appreciate that they're still trying to. Uh, one one, uh, one little, uh, I guess I would say, comparison to Raph, speaking of zone villains, would be... Uh, do you remember Drakuru from uh, Grizzly yes. Hills and Zoldrak? I think mm -hmm. that was something... While it wasn't a, lo a lot of things, th it was something... Uh, that was well done. You, you, uh, for those who don't know, Drakuru is basically... You first find him in, in, Gri in Grizzly Hills as an uh, imprisoned normal ice troll. You help him escape and then uh, he says he's basically a patriot. He's fighting the Scourge. You help him fight the Scourge. But then you realize, oh, he's working for the Lich King. And you just made the Lich King's presence in Zuldrak a lot stronger. And uh, basically for the first uh, part of Zuldrak, even though you don't really see him that much, you know he's basically the commander of the Scourge forces in Zuldrak, and there's that little element present. And I thought that was uh, fairly well done as a comparison to Raph. Oh, yeah, definitely. I remember the first time doing the um, Drakthoron Keep when you're... He's... I don't... I think they've changed it a little bit, but I know yeah. you can still do it, but it's not exactly the same, but, like, all of the quests in that dungeon are Drakuru being like, we gotta fight these guys for some reason. We gotta collect all this stuff. We gotta, like, kill them. And then you get to the end at, after you kill the last boss and he summons the Lich King, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> like, it, it made a really good, like, two-zone villain going yeah. into Zuldrak. You know that, like, I don't know, you felt like connected, like, I gotta go get this guy. I helped him do all of it, so I gotta go get him. So, yeah, they did it really well with uh, Drakuru. And the best part about Dr Drakuru is, uh, if you talk to him, his little gossip text is, uh, we're gonna be the best, man, you and me, we're like brothers now. Yep. <laughs> and then, he, like, I think he makes reference to, like, you betraying him, too, when you fight him, even though you, like, never mm -hmm. actually are friends with him. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was definitely, that was well done. Yeah. Um, going going back to uh, Tanan, uh, a little gripe I have of, I have about the Horde side, not so much the Alliance side, because the Alliance side makes sense. You, uh, I'm talking mostly about, about geography. You take a ship from the south east point of Tanan to Shadow Moon Valley. It's a fairly short trip. Uh, your ship, I think, cra uh, crashes there. It ma it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But in order to get to Frostfire Ridge, you basically have to sail sail around the entire continent, and you, yep. <laughs> and you you either go through the north, which is the Iron Horde's base, or you go through the south, which is filled with ogres, and, and way longer too than yeah. going all the way around south. Yep, that's a little gripe I had. Yeah, it was definitely weird that yeah, because you have to you. 
I mean, the logical path would be sail north around Gorgon, but like you said, at that point in the story, you know, Black Rock Foundry is up and running, and the Iron Docks are there, and yeah. you would have been, like, destroyed easily. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe if there was, like, one mini extra cutscene, and I wouldn't care if the Horde only got it, where, like, Cadgar's, like, since Cadgar's, like, Superman in this expansion, it could do, like, everything. Cadgar's, like, making your boat invisible, because there's a bunch of guys who would destroy you if they saw you. If the Alliance does make sense, it's like, boop, you just go down south, and you're there. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, uh, should we talk about Frostfire or about uh, Shadow Moon Valley? Shadow Moon Valley would be mostly you talking because I obviously don't have much experience with it. Yeah, let's do um, let's do Frostfire then, and I'll get I'll let you do more of the talking for Frostfire. Okay. Um, so Frostfire Frostfire Ridge, I um, I kind of I kind of enjoyed it. It wasn't exactly. I don't think it was really my fa- my favorite zone this expansion, but it was uh, an alright an alright zone. Um, basic basically, you crash you crash land your ship and are kind of Drekfar introduces you to the Frostwolf orcs and you make an alliance with them. I imagine it's the same with the Draenei and Shadowmoon Valley through Irel. Mm-hmm. I imagine. Yeah. Um, some uh, some of the things. Uh, don't, didn't really make that much sense from a sort of military strategy point of view because the frost wolves and the horde are besieged on at the beginning of the zone from two sides from the ogres and the thunderlords although the thunderlords seem to be taking their sweet time so yeah uh long long story long story short you beat the ogre you beat the ogres you take their capital even though it basically serves no purpose and there, <laughs> another an, a little weird thing is yes, you take the big tower of the ogres, but in uh, on the nor- on the northern side of the, the tower there are still ogres in game enslaving enslaving orcs and forcing them to mine and such. But that's just the thing. And then there's the Thunderlord storyline. Um, personally, I don't know how I feel about you, but I kind of like the little dynamic between. Durotan and and Garad uh, about uh, how he's about how not Garad Gnar, uh, how Gnar is uh, the uh, hard head and Durotan mm-hmm. is the more level headed and the little fina- finale when Gnar challenge challenges Durot- Durotan and uh, Durotan basically uh, throws his we- throws his weapons aside and tells him that you know you know what I'm talking about you know, do you yeah. Yeah, yeah, when he... Ba- I mean, honestly, Duratan kind of, like, cheats. Or he was like, hey, if you want to win, you got to kill me. Yeah. I, would, I was like, dude, that's pretty... <laughs> dude, you're being... You're not you're not keeping to the spirit of a uh, Makara. You're being a little bitch, Duratan. <laughs> At least fight and win. Don't just be like, I'm not going to even fight you. I don't know. <laughs> especially with the... I mean, maybe they should have just let Gennar be the leader. Because he dies, like, right after that. So, yeah. I don't understand. Uh, what uh, I saw uh, the the theme from I saw the theme from the previous expansion of about the horde about it being family as opposed to Garrosh's view of the horde. It really really reflects on this zone, especially since Frol is involved is involved a lot in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fun, the finale of the Thunderlord clan. I I, I liked how. Across the zone, you are kind of fighting them across little skirmishes, and you're making progress. And eventually, you take down the clan, even though they continue to be there, there in game, despite the fact that you beat them. But whatever. Uh, the finale with the Iron Wolf being revealed as the brother of Durotan. Yeah, I, I uh, it felt a little rushed. the The only part I really liked about that was. That they remembered that Fenris Wolf brother exists in our universe. Yeah, yeah, that was surprising because I remember doing it on the on the beta, and I was like, "Whoa! I cannot believe they remembered that." It was a really weird. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It was. I liked it. It was a good callback. Yeah, even though uh, they missed quite a few other callbacks in Warlords of Draenor, at least they remember <laughs> this one. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I, I would say this. I don't, my, I, my problem with the Thunderlord clan story in that zone is it takes too long to get going. Like, you're taking mm-hmm. too long to complete the story, and yeah. I don't know. I never, I never at any point in Frostfire doing it felt like the Frostwolves were in actual danger. 
Like, they kept being like, we're in danger, our home got attacked, and blah, 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 blah. But I was like, there's, like, barely, you raffle stomp the ogre so easily, the Thunderlords are barely there until the very, very last quest. I don't know, man. It took way too long. They did not seem threatening at all to me, which is interesting when you go when we uh, eventually talk about Shadow Moon, where holy shit, you're all. It feels like you're always being attacked by Nerzul's forces. But I just, I did not feel like we were, <laughs> the horde was in danger at any point. I, I see, I see. Um, the finale, the finale kind of made sense. The Thunderlords say, hey, we screwed up, Iron Horde, come and help us. The Iron Horde comes and you stop them. Yeah, that makes sense. And I and I really like the, the, the little cinematic. I've watched it uh, multiple, multiple times, to be honest. Oh, yeah, and for anyone listening, you know I'm not... I'm, I'm way more of an Alliance fan, but when Gennar says uh, Loktar and all the rocks are falling down, I was like, yeah, Gennar, this is all your victory. Duratan did shit. You and uh, and Draka are the ones who are the MVPs of this fight. Yep, pretty much. Uh, I will uh, say, uh, though, uh, that the... Him sorry, go Drek, ahead. Him and Drek'thar, not Draka. Oh, uh, yeah, Drek'thar. I forgot about Drek'thar. Yeah, Drek'thar. Draka also takes part in that final fight. Duratan, yeah. like, doesn't do anything. He stands in the back, I think. Uh, he shouts orders at you. <laughs> right, which is funny because you're the commander, right? And you're technically allies, not subordinates, but whatever. Right, exactly. I mean, I, I didn't. You shouldn't be ordering him around, but he's kind of like, go here and then go here, go there, do this and do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I will say the actual final quest where you're holding off like wave one, wave two, wave three. I don't feel like it's nearly as good as the the Shadow Moon one where you're like in Karabor fighting off. Mm. Like I, it just it felt more, I don't know, more dire. Which I, I guess is my big problem with Frostfire. I'd never felt dire to me. I don't know. That's my actual only thoughts. The cinematic was great. It's one of my favorites. Um, again, I'm not I'm not a Horde fan, but I thought it was I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the little the little detail I detail I did like though was uh, the fact that they addressed the uh, the Earth giants of Draenor before the Magnaron, before the ogres, the big giant ones that the Thunderlords hunted, and uh, and. Uh, one thing I did appreciate about Warlords, despite the fact that it's contrived and it has a lot of flaws, the fact that they really developed, uh, spent quite a bit of time, quite a bit of time developing the previous civilizations and the previous orc clans established either in Burning Crusade or in other previous lore. Yeah, definitely. And I liked how, and uh, especially the little comic on the website with Fenris and uh, uh, Garad uh, with uh, Fenris joining the Thunder, Thunder Lords uh, oh and, yeah and the con and the contrast bet between uh, uh, the Thunder Lords and the Frost Wolves I uh, rather like that to be honest yeah it was uh, I had no problem with that I thought most of the like I guess the more ancillary lore bits like the comic and then the short story Besides the actual game, which I have a lot of issues with, all of those things were great. Like they all added a lot of, a lot of information, that filled in a lot of the blanks. Um, yeah, I really liked the Fenris one. The it was a comic, right? Where they showed him joining. Or was it a story? I don't remember. It was a mini comic. Right, where they show him joining up with yeah. Thunderlords. That was really well done. Mm -hmm. um, it made a lot of sense. I, I think didn't that one also come out after the game launched? Because uh, one of my one of my big problems with a lot of the sh my actual only problem with all the short stories and stuff this expansion is a lot of it came out like way after the game came out like we're gonna get to Spires of Iraq later on but that whole short story which is like my favorite one they've ever done that one came out way after the game came out mm. and I just wish I would have had a better if I would have read those first and then played the game I feel like I would have had a more more of appreciation of like Fenris and then later on for the Arakoa for what's her face the leader. Um, it's uh, just, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they could have timed it better, I guess. Mm, I agree to to you with a point, but uh, I think the a lot uh, main thing uh, this expansion and uh, it se it seems uh, uh, you you remember uh, in Frostfire. Uh, if, uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is, yes, it would have been nice to have them before the expansion or at the time of the release of the expansion, the comics, the short stories, etc. But a lot of the stories of uh, each individual zone is about uh, 
sort of revealing revealing a mystery even though though right. said mystery is only addressed in one quest or across a large quest chain uh in frostfire you get to the reveal with fenris being durotan and gunnar's brother at the end which is a bit a bit a bit of a shocker and would have been spoiled if it would have been presented in a in comic in comic in the a comic book form mm -hmm. and uh i i, I agree yeah. with you it's 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 like i mean I personally would have liked it, but I, I understand your point. It's a kind of a catch-22. Like, I would see why some people would want that information beforehand. I still really like that reveal, and I still really like the comic. I'm just not sure. I don't know if the order that they released them in was better, or mm -hmm. if they would have reversed it, if it would have been better. The shock of, the, of like, the spoiler would have definitely <laughs> been removed. But, I don't know. I, 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 when I made that declaration, I guess I was talking just for myself. I wasn't. I'm not sure how it would have been if they switched it. Uh, well, uh, I can, uh, I can say that I also knew of most of the little plot twists, for, with the exception of uh, Iraq uh, and Nagrand. I think I know most of them before I actually did them because the internet is full of spoilers. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm hmm so yeah, that's basically Frostfire Ridge. Care to talk to us about uh, Shadow Moon Valley? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so Shadow Moon Valley, much, much like Frostfire Ridge, um, you know, you show up, you crash your boat. Uh, you're with uh, Yorel, who you freed, and Murad. Murad, I think I said earlier that it was Yorel who convinced you, Velen. It's more, it's more Murad. And I guess one thing that's kind of funny is right out of the gate for the Draenei, Velen is completely aware you're from another universe. Like, the really? first thing, right away. Right away, Mara Velen says something about, like, these are people from another world. Like, the, like the first thing he says, and that's why they're helping you. Which I think was kind of weird, because they went out of their way for Thrall not, for Duratan not to find out yeah, that he's yeah. Thrall's father. And that still bothers me, and they still haven't done it. I'm still hoping that they do at some point. But they went out of their way to make that reveal not happen. And immediately... Velen's like, oh, because I think Marad says something like, we're from another world, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, you show up, you set up you know, all your shenanigans, all your garrison, blah, 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 blah. And I will say, right out of the gate, the Shadow Moon Orcs definitely feel more dangerous compared to the Thunderlords, at least. Hmm. Um, Ner see, because earlier I said Ner'zhul didn't come off super threatening to me, but, like, the threat of just the Shadow Moons as a whole on the Draenei forces seem, seem threatening. Um, you have, like, the introduction where you're clearing all the stuff out, you're, like, learning about Yurel's past, where you meet her sister in one of their cities, Elidor. Mm. Um, she gets kidnapped in that story, and that's when you find out Ner'zhul sacrificing people to the Dark Star, which eventually we find out is a Dark Naru, um, named Kara, or however pronunciation they put on that, um... And my still favorite moment of Shadow Moon Valley is it's in a quest chain where you're actually not dealing with the Shadow Moon Orcs. You're sent to, what is that city called? You're sent to, like, the Draenei's, like, little capital area in that, not, not Carabor, but, like, where they're all assembling. Um, and you get there, and uh, Exarch Maladar is like, something is wrong, this area is tainted with, with void magic. Uh, this doesn't sound right. So I, I'm the only one that apparently apparently cares about this. Mm -hmm. um, so we send you on an investigation, and you find out that Exarch Othar, who is one of their leaders, I believe he's the leader of the Shatari. Um, uh, he I he's think just so. I think so. Yeah. yeah, you find out he's actually betrayed. He's working to betray the Draenei to the Legion, and then you find out he becomes Sokrathar, and that was like my favorite reveal. It still is my favorite reveal of the expansion thus far. When he reveals himself, he says something like, I forsake that name and I take my new name, Sokrathar, and you fight him. And I was like, oh, shit, I remember you. Hmm. And um, it was easily my favorite moment of the expansion thus far, which they <laughs> kind of ruin when you have to fight him later on in the in the garrison campaign and you just kill him with no fanfare. But... uh. So yeah, you you you're going through. You're dealing with the betrayal of, of Othar. You're you're learning that um, Nirzul's mate. What's his What's her name? Off the top of my head, I can't remember. Something with G, I think. Uh, come on, Nirzul's your dude. 
Yeah, uh, but nobody cares about his wife. At least, <laughs> until, at least until before World Wars of Draenor, nobody cared. about yeah, You're right, Rule Khan. Rule oh, that's right, what her name was. Right. And you find out that she left with a bunch of a bunch of Shadowmoon orcs after they found out. After they basically, you see this in a cutscene. Um, Grom and Garrosh and some random orc you fight later approach an Erzul and Rule Khan and are basically like, "Look, you gotta do. You gotta bring some kind of firepower, or not only are we not gonna let you in the Iron Horde, we're actually gonna kill you because you're not of any use." <laughs> and that's when Nirzul's like, well, shit, I have nothing else. I have no other way to save my people. I'm going to break this taboo, use the powers of the Dark Star. And that's when Wilkan's like, I'm out. She takes like a bunch of uh, Shadow Moon orcs with her. So you have that storyline going on, which I thought was really interesting. Um, once again, sets up Nirzul as not like just a villainous villain, if that makes sense. Not just evil for yeah, evil's right. sake. Like he had to do it. And then, just like in our universe, even though he had to do one thing, he kind of, like, <sighs> takes it too far and then mm -hmm. eventually gets mm -hmm. consumed by his own lust for power. Exact same thing happens in Shadow Moon Valley, um, which I really like. So you, you confront him. He's like, ha-ha, I have sacrificed enough people. The Dark Star is here. That's when the cinematic takes place where Velen sacrifices himself to cure the Naru to become Kara, who then just <laughs> wrecks shop once you do the Karabor, uh the Karabor finale, where your Velen dies, Yorel's freaking out, Mirage shows up and is like, "We gotta defend Karabor. The Iron Horde's attacking. You sh you ride there on fairy dragons, which <laughs> fairy dragons just became a thing. <laughs> Appar That's you learn that apparently fairy dragons have always been the mounts for the Draenei, which makes no sense to me. But That's fucking <laughs> hilarious. You ride there on fairy dragons." And you use the power of uh, of Kara to just wreck shit, and it's it's way cooler than I think. Like I was saying earlier about the waves in Shadow Moon in a uh, Frostfire Ridge, you're, you're like you're on you're in the air for one, which is pretty into, which is pretty cool. Mm. Like throwing down like light like, like light lightning bolts. I guess if that makes sense to like kill a bunch of orcs, and then at the very end you fight that one named orc that you saw on the vision with Garrosh and Grom, and then uh. I'm sorry, is it an orc we've seen before? Because there are a few callbacks to... There are. Orcs. I can't remember. He, he didn't seem familiar to me. He had one of those names where it was just like, Orc Iron Shot. Like, his last name was one of those really cliched, like, uh. Thunder Smash, or one of those really, <laughs> like, really weird... Um, I, I, he did not seem familiar to me, but he was there, I think, only because you then fight him later on at the finale. Right. Just to be like, hey, I remember you from the cinematic. He definitely wasn't somebody in the lore that I remember, but after you beat him, then Kara, my, like, not even, this is not even a cinematic, but I think it's really cool. Kara, like, floats out, the Naru, like, floats out over, like, the, the Bay of Karabor, and you see, like, all the Iron Horde ships are still there, and she just, like, explodes with a bunch of energy and just destroys all of them right at once. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know, it's like the very first time I felt like, wow... The Draenei won something in a pretty significant way, and they seem, like, pretty powerful, actually. Like, the first time I've ever felt that way about the Draenei. Mm. Um, so, you know, I guess in the cinematic I didn't mention, Velen kind of, like, whatever his little mark of the Naru, he transfers to Yorel, and she kind of begins becoming, like, the de facto leader that you play. You, you experience her rise to leadership uh, throughout the storyline. And, yeah, it kind of ends with the... <laughs> completely forced segue into Gorgron, just like the Horde one. Hmm. And, um... <laughs> I don't know. The, the cinematic was cool in Shadow Moon Valley. It was really, really interesting. I don't like Velen had to die to make Ner'zhul seem threatening. It felt really forced to me. And especially when you fight Ner'zhul in the instance and kill him with not that much fanfare. <laughs> like, he's, he's... You kill him... Like, it's, it's, like, Valen has to sacrifice himself because Nirzul did this terrible thing, and then you end up fighting him, like, cowering. It, 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 the way that I saw it, he's not really cowering. He's trying to summon more spirits of his ancestors after having failed, but, like, in the way back of his ancestor's tomb, all alone, all of his people are either dead or have left him. He's by himself. It's kind of, I, I guess maybe it's fitting, yeah. but you kind of, like, kill him after there's nothing else he could possibly do. I felt, I felt kind of sad for him. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, did I, did I, I know you said you haven't played it, but is there anything I missed or anything that you've actually played or saw about Shadow Moon that you liked or have questions about? 
Well, I did see the cinematic and I thought it uh, looked good. Uh, one question that I had about uh, Shadow Moon was... Uh, basically, in Frostfire, you're facing the Thunderlords and the Ogres. And when, the, and when they both screw up, uh, the Iron Horde comes to the rescue, so to say. Uh, in Shadow Moon, is the Iron Horde already there fighting alongside the Shadow Moon clan? Or do they come later? No, you kind of like get there as Grom and Garash... Or Garash isn't there, but Grom is. You get there as Grom is there, like overseeing Nerzul's efforts to summon the Dark Star. Mm. And like I would say, like two thirds through the Zone story, he summons it. That's where you find out he sacrificed your old sister, who I mentioned earlier, who's dead now. Um, and then he's kind of after, after Grom's there, he's like, "All right, um, we're gonna go attack Karabor. I'll rally the Iron Horde." And then he leaves. And then you have to deal with stopping Nerzul again. Then you get the cinematic. And then when you do the final quest, that's when they show up and they're attacking Karabor. But the Iron Heart is not there before then. Right, right. Uh, I, I find it. I find Grom's uh, aversion to fill magic due, obviously, to Garrosh. Rather ironic, considering uh, the things he's forcing the Shadow Moon Clan and the Ogres to do. Yeah, really. It's not that. I mean, I guess technically it is different, but it's the magic is like. They're, they're sacrificing not only Drenai, but they're sacrificing orcs that aren't with them, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're, they're killing some of their own outcasts who have escaped and then got captured again. Like, they're they're killing their own people to summon this crazy-ass magic. It's not that different from fell magic um, in, I guess, principle, if you want to say it like that. It is definitely weird that he's fine with one thing and not with the other. I think it kind of uh, emulates a direction that we saw in Garrosh's character back in uh, Miss of Pand Pandaria and I guess not really Cataclysm but Miss of, Miss of Pandaria where uh, he resorts to use, using the sh the Shah to fight the, al the Alliance and the Dark Spear, the Dark Spear Rebellion and mm -hmm. uh, we, we also see ba basically Garrosh has this giant aversion to fell magic due to his childhood, childhood I guess because Daddy wasn't home too much because of fell magic. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I guess it's kind of in the hell scream blood, so to say, to try be to, a hypocrite. <laughs> to try to be sort of as mighty as they as they can be. So I guess you could say. Yeah, I guess without mighty as they can be, without crossing this really arbitrary line that they drew for, between like one power source or another. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. It, yeah, because Grom is still completely like, Gul'dan's a bad guy, even when he gets his ass whooped by him. Like, even when he refuses him in the legendary cinematic. It's really, I don't know, it's <laughs> definitely strange. But I think that's everything about Shadow Moon. Um, you you want to talk about the amazing story of Gorbron? Can I mention just one little detail about Shadow Moon that uh, sure. annoyed me? It's not really related to the Shadow Moon quest line, but rather my in-game garrison experience i got uh an apexis daily god bless those uh, to oh yes to kill some sargeri in uh shadow moon valley when mm -hmm. i get when i get back to my garrison i get my first garrison inv invasion the shadow moon clan even though i'm on i'm on the other side of the continent i never killed one shadow moon orc in game and i am i was fighting their enemies and get this at the end of the shadow moon storyline the Shadow Moon clan is basically destroyed. So I don't know mm -hmm. how they still have forces left to, like, do that. It doesn't make any... Like, you roundly defeat them. Like, there's not even, like, an indication that they're going to survive after that. Right. I mean, I guess unless they're for Rule Khan's outcasts, but they're not. They're still the bad ones. So... Yeah, because they use, like, necromancy and void magic and such. Stuff yeah, because like Rule Khan actually joins you. Like, joins your garrison as you go through the quest chain. So hmm. it's not her forces... I don't know who the, I don't know which Shadow Moon are there still that survived, and, but yeah, <laughs> that's how I felt about the Thunderlords too. But I guess there is more leeway with them because they do show up at other places. Like you yeah. fight them, you fight like a boss. One of them, one of the bosses in uh, the the raid, the second one is a Thunderlord, hmm. and a, one of the bosses in the train instance is a Thunderlord. So I mean, like there is more. You see more of them, but honestly, the Shadow Moon clan is completely destroyed at the end of the Shadow Moon Valley storyline. Uh, there's also the thing with the fun the Thunderlords, not only the raid boss, but uh, in various places where, like, say, there's a 
I don't know if that's uh, also present in, Sha in, the Sh in Shadow Moon Valley, but in various places like uh, oh the Iron Horde is attacking or the oh the Iron Horde is doing etc. When they do try to differentiate the clans between the Iron Horde, say the Black Procs have a lot of armor, the Warg Songs uh, ride on their wolves. You also see a few Thunderlords, so that's mm -hmm. the little. And I don't think you see Shadow Moon Orcs. I don't. I don't remember seeing them past the in that zone. Well, they're also uh, treated sort of uh, as uh, uh, separate from the rest of the Iron Horde. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an Iron, for example, there's an Iron Horde invasion of your garrison, and there's the Shadow Moon invasion of your garrison. Yes, and yeah, yeah. I will say I do know in the in the raid that's coming up, Hellfire Citadel, there is in the like the council fight that they have. I like that there's the one time that you see a Shadow Moon orc. Mm -hmm. She's not an old character from the lore, but she's like. Something something Shadow Fury, like one another one of those orcs who like her last name is like I do shadow magic. <laughs> she's like the only person after the after that zone that I know is like involved, but he, she's with Gul'dan, so I guess that makes sense in some regard. That's kind of historically at least more consistent. There, it's that's also I'm diverging a little bit, but uh, indulge me here. That's also one of my little gripes with warlords. They forget a few of the more mi minor clans and even some of the more major clans, such as the Dragon Maw clan. <laughs> right. Uh, one I'm laughing because I'm remembering, sorry, I'm laughing because I'm remembering that Metzen got asked about it and he's like, there were no dragons on Draenor. Oops. Why is there a Dragon Maw clan? Well, there are fairy dragons. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, one theory that I made up in uh, my head, so to say, was that... Uh, the, dra the Dragon Maw are basically a splinter group of the Thunderlord clan because they ba they basically employ the same principle, so to say, with the exception of the fact that they have gray, gray skin instead of brown. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, one example that does spring to mind about clans being forgotten is, is are the Bone Chur clan. You remember them? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they're basically fanatic cannibals, but the only Bone Chur you do see is... Uh, Two is is are two chieftains that are basically in Talador. You find out about Terngor, and Terngor says, "You two bone chewers, stop that young, dashing, handsome hero." <laughs> and it's a uh, it's a uh, what's his name? Isn't it Tagar Spinebreaker or whatever yeah, from? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Harkan from... uh, Skull Splinter. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, they, I didn't even thought about that. The two of them are there, but they don't mention their their clan. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I imagine story-wise that m a lot of these minor clans were either destroyed by the Iron Horde or they were so incorporated they completely lost their identity or they joined the Shadow Council en masse, I guess. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because both, both of them are definitely Shadow Council, aren't they? I'm trying to remember that yeah, quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warlords. Yeah. Now let's move on to Borgrond. <laughs> the best zone in the expansion, am I right? <laughs> uh, where to start with Gorgrand? How we start with? It seems like it's not completed. <laughs> that's how. That's how it, it felt like. I remember doing it on the PTR, and I was like, "All right, I got to this part, and it's obviously not done yet. I'll come back and do the end when they add it in." And then all they added was that little solo scenario at the end, and they were like, "Goodbye, <laughs> you're done." And I was like, "Whoa, what a." <laughs> blatant stop. I was like, alright, I got whiplash stopping so fast. I guess we're going to Talador right now. Yeah, Gorgron, Gorgron felt like the zone that they spent the least amount of uh, thought into. And, uh, you can see that the environment, the Blackrock found in, in the background, and the conflict between the Breakers and the Primals is, in is interesting, and uh, it's definitely a, a new addition to um the lore so to say but the actual storyline as opposed to the atmosphere is uh you go there you fight people uh yeah you get this nefarious artifact that's not really explained use it for one quest and then it gets destroyed i completely forgot about that yeah yeah, I, I agree with you. I like the um, I like the idea of like the breakers fighting the primals and I like Gorg the atmosphere is great. Like I love the the, the steam vents and all that stuff. But they honestly, it felt like they ran out of time and they were like, all right, this is the zone we're not going to complete. We got to push it out before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So sorry, Gorgon. 
Um, one little addition that I did like was the. Uh, I kind of I rather like the inter the horde introduction to the zone. Uh, basically, when you meet the laughing the laughing skull clan, and yes, there mm -hmm. are a few, few grinding quests in the beginning, but the atmosphere of uh, Durotan and saying and telling you let's uh, let's approach their village alone because they're batshit crazy, <laughs> and uh, they they rather they basically ambush you and say. We're batshit crazy, but I guess we kind of need your help. So help us, and we may not murder you. <laughs> right. I do like that little kid that you meet and that you do quests for, because he shows up again in Tanan Jungle. I've been playing on the PTR. He's really? there again, and I was like, "Yeah, little buddy." Like you get the yeah, you like get this quest after you do the intro to Tanan, where it's like if you're Horde, at least the the alliance is like, "Hey, it's the exact same thing, but you're going to Drenai instead." Hmm. The Horde's like, "Go report to these scouts," and one of them is just the kid. He's just there with the he's just there with the Arakoa by himself, and it's it was pretty funny. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, that that little kid is my fa my favorite character, and I might have indirectly showed it by his mother because she's a garrison follower. I may have given her the best gear. <laughs> right. I will say that the alliance introduction to to Gorgoron is terrible. Like it's oh. you you fly there. You're after. Like, you complete Shadow Moon, and it's like, all right, you did it. You saved Karabor. Randomly, let's go to Gorgron because the Iron Horde's base is there. It's like I felt like it felt like when Yorel was explaining it to me in the quest, she was like, her as the character was like, uh, I guess we're supposed to go here next. See you there. <laughs> then you fly there, and Marad's already there for some reason, and he's like, then he like yells at Yorel because she's like, we need to bring all of our garrison forces and steamroll this place, which sounds like a good idea. But Marad is just like, no, Yorel, it's too dangerous. And then you do, do a bunch of irrelevant quests with Dylan Darkweaver and the Dark Irons, who aren't not anywhere as interesting as the Bone Chewers. Mm. It's just, I don't know. The Laughing Skull, not Bone Chewers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, this is my problem with this expansion. All of these orcs, their stupid orc names, all the stupid orc clans, I get them all mixed up. But uh, yeah. That also ties a little bit a little bit back uh, to my in initial complaint that you don't feel like you're the commander you feel like the you're the champion or the figurehead because you don't you're have, the muscle you don't have any say in uh let's go attack the Gorgrand. it makes sense if you're the horde because Gorgrand is right next to frostfire but if you're alliance your priority should probably be let's move to talador and help the Dranai settlements there not Let's randomly attack the Iron Horde in on the other yeah. side of the continent. De yeah, it definitely is weird because the, the, the these Renai would have a much more vested interest in being like, "Look, Chetrath and Akindun are getting screwed. Let's go help them instead." But nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did. I mean, there's there's not even a cinematic. That's how irrelevant Gordon is. Like, there's not even a cinematic. <laughs> mm. Yeah, pretty much. I did like the. Uh, the the dungeons in uh, Gorgrand, uh, Grimmel Deep Depart, and uh, the Everbloom. I like those, to be honest. Yes, the, I love the train one. I love the, the the depot, and I really liked how the Everbloom ended in Stormwind. Mm -hmm. Like I wish they would have like went somewhere with that. Like maybe some of the spores got away, and that's gonna come up later. But <laughs> nope, you just kill the guy. He's in Stormwind, and then the end. I have to say that I'd, I would have liked to see say. Uh, a little bit of, uh, this is assuming that Gorgrand was actually finished but I would have liked to see a little bit of interaction with say Khadgar uh, before while you're doing the story say uh, Khadgar, Khadgar says hey my current tour buddy set up shop uh, in the Everbloom Wilds care to uh, help them help them out and sort of uh, use phasing to uh, you know Actually, yeah. set up the base that gets yeah. taken over that you don't actually know about until you go to the instance and surprise, there's been a base here. It was pretty large, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even consider that. I agree. I agree 100. percent You you have no you're completely unaware that that place even exists until you go and do the instance. Uh, and they and uh, it's not, not really something incredibly innovative that I'm suggesting because I, they did the, do this uh, this sort of thing before with. Uh, you Jade Forest with the whole Jade Serpent and the battle of, at uh, Thingy. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You, you basically you, where you basically do a few quests inside the the temp the temple first, then sit and see the jade the jade serpent or the pa the panda that the jade serpent is as you know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, whatever her name is, the little kid that she's pretending she is to like judge your worth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would have been cool. That's I really like that actually. Now that I'm remembering it, that part of that part of Jade Forest where you were in the instance first doing stuff, and then they like I don't, I know have they done that after that, or before even? I think that was like the first time they actually did that, isn't it? I feel like um, I just I don't know. I, 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 there aren't any. <laughs> I know I'm asking you to be like Tyranor. Do you know all of the game off the top of your head? Remember, <laughs> but uh. I, I don't remember them doing something quite as in depth as that, at least. And, in my, and they should have. In my head, I'm thinking that they might have done so something like this in Wrath or in Cataclysm, but there, there aren't any examples that pop into my head, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it would have been great seeing them set up the base. It would have been great maybe seeing Jaina show up, who later comes in, in the Legendary Quest chain. And who's completely against the horde? It, might, it would have been cool seeing a, a, a an interaction between her and Cadgar before she like shows up at the end and is like, "I don't trust you if you're the horde." Yeah, that would would have been cool for the alliance. If you were a horde, she would just chase you out of the outpost. Yep, I did like though that. It, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But when you first go to this is in Talador at least, but but when you go to the base there, if you're a horde, you get stopped mm -hmm. uh, by yeah, the. Yeah. Arcane Elemental or whatever. That was a nice little touch. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's really not much you can say about Gorgoron. You, The story doesn't feel finished. The, the concepts are good. The, the ideas are good. The atmosphere is good. It, doesn't, it just doesn't feel like they had enough time to finish it to completion. So, I also, don't know. Also, the zone is kind of gigantic. Yeah. That's... W I agree with you when when it comes to flying, that really should have been a zone where you could fly. Yeah, or at the very least, the level 100 parts of the zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> Entertaining, well, isn't it? Yeah, yep. It was so... It was, it was. I went through it once on the PTR, and I had to do it again because I had to make a new character, and honestly, I was seriously considering just not doing it. I could not get through Gorgorond again, but... I don't know, it, and I thought they were going to fix it. <laughs> and I was like, this is obviously not completed, but, you know, hey, it's the PTR, or the beta, so we'll get to it eventually. That also doesn't really make sense to me, because didn't they say before uh, the expansion was released, didn't they say that they basically have a gigantic new team to help them make stuff faster and better? Oh, yeah, that's one thing I just love to bring up, where they were pumping their chests about how their team is 50% bigger and uh, it doesn't seem like it. They, 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 still, they still can have the excuse of, oh, they were all working on the next expansion. So at the very least, we have to wait until see how long that comes out. But I honestly feel like that they were just excusing how long they were taking to make the expansion. Hmm. Right. So shall we go to Talador, which is more interesting? Yeah, it's definitely more interesting, I, I have to say. Uh... Uh, should I start? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I, I thought you were going to make a point. Yeah, I, I can start. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. So, yeah, Talador, you show up. I, I honestly can't even remember the difference between the Alliance and the Horde intro. The Horde, you, like, you show up, Duratan's like, hey, blah, 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 blah. You eventually see Orgrim Doomhammer mm. for the Horde, and he dies, like, right away. Very, or at least for, I know you see him a little bit more for the Horde, but for the Alliance, honestly, you see him once in one mm. little town that gets taken over. Um, oh, what was that place called? Because in Outland, it got... Telmore? Yeah, yeah. The, isn't that the place that gets blown up by the bomb in Outland? When yeah, you do that? by the blood elves, yeah. Yeah, he shows up there, you see him as the Alliance, and then you literally don't see him again until the cinematic, or uh, right before Shatterath, where he gets killed. Yeah, and I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> that was also kind of kind of uh, annoying to me. Doomhammer is one of my fav favorite characters, but... My main gripe is, as the Horde, you go, you go there, you set up, you set up shop, you go to fight the Iron Horde, and then you see Ogrim. Everyone is holy shit, it's Ogrim, and uh, Dur Durtan goes to fight him. You fight him for a little bit. It, it's basically kind of a Star Wars Revenge of the Sith kind, kind of, kind of feel when they fight, except worse. Mm -hmm. uh, 
with du with Duotan saying, Orgrim, we're bros, the Iron Horde is evil, and Orgrim, I'm loyal to my clan, you go screw off, Duotan, you suck because we you didn't join us. And then the little bit in Telmor, which is re really relevant. And right. then the next time you see him is in Shatrath, Shat <laughs> Shat when you assault the city and you see him arguing with Blackhand and he says, Blackhand, we can't kill innocent civilians, except that's basically what you've been doing un up until now. And Blackhand is, you suck, Orgrim, and then you basically fight Blackhand alongside him and then Blackhand kills him. Just like yeah, that. it's definitely a complete like heel turn. Like, uh, we're we're all right, we're not that bad. And then the next time you see him, black hand, no, and then he dies. Like, what a waste of an important character to this story. I don't know, especially when you consider in six point two, there definitely are orcs who. And I always thought this is what Doomhammer's purpose was going to be. I figured the, when inevitably we beat the Iron Horde and Gul'dan does whatever he was going to do. I didn't know what he was going to do at the time, but he was going to do something because he's Gul'dan. Whenever Gul'dan does his thing, there are going to be some orc stuff who are like, no, you're a douchebag. I don't want to join you. And I felt like Doomhammer was going to be like, yeah, come with me. I'll be the leader of the, the outcasts that don't want to be with them. Right. Especially in 6.2 because there are orcs like that. And it seems like Grom has just basically forsaken them because he gets captured. He makes no effort. I know a little bit about the story of the raid. I'm not going to spoil it, but he gets captured, and there's a part where you free him in the raid. And But he makes, like, no reference to any of the orcs who once followed him that still are fighting against some of Gul'dan's forces. He doesn't give a shit about them. He just wants to get revenge on Gul'dan. All of those orcs basically get, like, captured or and forcefully turned or just murdered. Hmm. Doomhammer could have been like, the guy to be like, hey, come follow me. Yeah, definitely. Like, I don't know why they wasted him for nothing. Like, for n literally nothing. Nothing was gained for his appearance and expansion. Uh, it's also interesting that uh, Dur Duratan has a few li lines with uh, uh, Doomham Doomhammer, as you would obviously expect. But Frog gets absolutely no... Yes. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, nothing. Thrall does I don't even know if... I mean, Thrall is there at the final battle, but... Or is he? I don't even know if he is actually at Shatrath, now that I think about it. No, I don't think he is. He's not in the like, cinematic. Does he even know that Dirt, that Doomhammer died? Is he even is he even aware that that all happened? I don't remember him being... Because I've played both story. I've played both factions. Hmm. I don't recall him ever even knowing. I, I'm sure he was a quest giver, and he... Um... He was at the at that one outpost where uh, you were you meet uh, Doomhammer for the first time he, as a quest giver. He wasn't exactly there confronting Doomhammer, but yeah, he, no, absolutely no interaction. I don't think he's even mentioned once in the quest that Thrall does, except maybe stuff like uh, we have to stop the Iron Horde forces that also happen to be led by Doomhammer. <laughs> right. Also, can I point out? I, this also is my my part of my problem with Duratan and Thrall. They never reveal that that he has the Doom Hammer. Thrall has a Doom Hammer. <laughs> no one mentions that. Like, there's two Doom Hammers. Why? I cannot believe they just expected people not to realize Thrall's running around with the Doom Hammer, which is a, a popular weapon. People know what it is. They made a whole freaking comic about it, being how important it is. Duratan's with Thrall all the time. He's wearing the Doom Hammer plate. Granted, they're underneath his tattered robes, and he has the hammer, but <laughs> they never mention it once. Come on, guys. Put a little effort into the story, this expansion. In, uh, Thrall, in, Thrall, in Blizzard's defense, so to say, uh, if you look at the Doom Hammer while it was still in Orgrim's hands versus while it's in uh, Thrall's hands, there are a few hmm. minor yeah. alter alterations. Basically, while it was in Doomhammer's hands, it had the Blackrock lo logo on it, and while Thrall has it, it was replaced with the Frost Wolf. Wolf. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, yeah, true enough. I just wish... It's such a... Th it's, it, I'm more upset about the, the, the father-son thing, and that just kind of ties into it, where they don't, like... They don't reveal a thing, which is like... A, with how basic the story is, you figure they'd be like, let's do this really basic thing, where it's like, hey, I'm your son from the other yeah. universe. No way! And that's also one thing that really irked me. There are a few, I would say, subtle bit where he said, where, for example, Duratan says something imposing, and you see in the chat in the chat room, uh, 
as a little emote, Thrall seems impressed, or Thrall uh, mm -hmm. sheds a tear, or something stupid like that. Uh, but there's one line that really annoyed me, because it seemed extremely out of place and extremely weird. I don't know if it was in Taldor or in Nagrand, but Duotan gives you, gives you a quest and says something like, we have to stop the Iron Horde doing whatever the hell they were doing at the time. <laughs> and Agra, who's there, says... Durotan, you have been like a father to Frog. Yes, all it's time. the it's the finale of Nagran when you're doing the thing to get to. It's like right before you do the fight with Garrosh. Yeah, that that line really yeah. annoyed me because it made absolutely no sense in story or out of story. It was a really weird like, here's your dad, but not that. Like I don't, I don't know. It, and it's also Frog at this at this point in time has a lot more. I think Thrall is actually older than Durtan is, if we compare, you know what I'm talking about, time, yeah. time travel, timey-wimey thing. So <laughs> why would Durtan be like a father to someone younger than him? And considering considering the fact that most of their interaction ha has been planning battle, battle strategies, and Thrall is argue, argue, arguably the more, the more experienced commander of the two. Oh, I would say not even arguably. He most certainly is at this point, at least. Like, he's been through, like, for all the shoehorning, he's been in, like, literally every storyline of the expan of every, like, expansion. He's except missed, I guess, except for the beginning part. He's he's done a lot of stuff. Like, he's way more experienced. It's such, it's such a weird disconnect. Right, right. <sighs> but Talador, yeah. <laughs> so... I mean, for the Alliance side, it's 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 equally as uninteresting. I mean, it's even more uninteresting, in my opinion. I can't even recall, like, super specifics about the Draenei story. It's like, hey, there are Draenei here. They're getting attacked. Let's save them, because Yorel is, like, the emerging leader of the Draenei. Right. But uh, Murad's slowly descending into, like, bloodthirsty madness. Mm. Um, that, they, that they end up not, like... There's, there's... I remember in the beta as well... There was like a whole bunch of pl stuff that got cut where where uh, Murad was like, yeah, they deserve all the stuff they're getting, and they're like, he becomes like really, really bloodthirsty where, to the point that Yorel is like, dude, stop. <laughs> like they got rid of that part, which I thought was I don't know. His character was going in that direction anyway. Like he, used, if you watch the Lords of the War series, he's like that. Mm. I don't know why they would feel the need to remove that. I actually didn't know that they removed that because uh, I also listened to the data data mine files at the time and saw. Oh, I really like this direction that they're taking Murad in. Yeah, I, I mean, initially, they were actually, like, a couple, Yorel and Murad, and then they got rid of that early, early on. But they still had a lot of the, um, like, the stuff where Yorel's like, stop, you know, calm down, your rage is going to consume you, or whatever vague crap she says into that effect. Mm. Um, but then they, they cut, like, all of that out. They really, did, like, decreased Murad's... Uh, to the point where all of his quests he gives in Talador is just, like... Yorel would be like, here's all of the important strategic things we need to do. And then you get, you get all those quests and you talk to Murad, like, uh, also, by the way, go kill 20 orcs. Like, <laughs> he has, like, three of those quests where Yorel's like, do all of these things to save everybody. Murad, what do you got to say? Go, go, go kill 10 orcs. <laughs> Thanks, Murad. <laughs> uh, I also didn't know about, about, the, about the fact that they removed the romance between uh, Yorel and Murad. I thought that was... Uh... An ambitious and rather interesting element. Yep, no, completely taken away. There's no evidence of that whatsoever in the final product. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because uh, I think I think people were like, oh, he didn't, we, they don't want to tie Yorel to a to a man, but it's like he dies and she like takes that to like become even better. Yeah. And so it's it's not like a stereotypical like she needs her man. It's more like she's the the actual good leader one, and he's the one spiraling out of control. And when he dies, I, there was even a part where he says some, she says something like, "Poor Murad, in the end, his rage like consumed him or something like that." Mm, mm. So it was I don't I don't know. Yeah, they got rid of that too. So. Oh, that makes me less excited to try the Alliance storyline. Yep. So yay! I will say, um, all of that is like its own story, and then there's like another story that's almost as long in that zone that has to deal with the Burning Legion. And and uh, Auchindoon, which I thought was yeah. way better. I like it a lot more because Lady Lydrin is like one of my favorite minor characters, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm glad she's back. But she really didn't do anything. She's basically the horde <laughs> version of Maladar. 
mm. for like questing purposes. He just like repeats like once again it's that thing where they just are the saying the exact same thing for each faction, which kind of bums me out. Like she doesn't have any extra things that she does. He doesn't have any extra things that he does that differentiate the two who should be completely different aside from they both worship the light. Right. Uh, I did find uh, the whole, the parallel between from Burning Crusade with the Aldor and the Scryers, how they were rivals and now they're working together. And in Burning Crusade, they started working together after uh, Kael'thas betrayed the Blood Oaths and Lady Lyadrin found basically renewed faith in the light and sought redemption from a doll and they basically teamed up and are best buddies and i find i found it interesting that she is basically now also helping the Junai, perhaps also as a way to atone for her sins or just as a way to well i guess i worship the light so i better help it yeah it's one of those things where i felt like once again just like gorgon the concept was good like the idea of it was good not that it wasn't completed, but they just didn't differentiate it enough for me. Like, I, I right. love Lady the Idrin. Like, she is, like, one of my favorite, favorite minor characters. Her and Amber Kiernan, who is, like, this, the Alliance sniper chick, are, like, my favorite minor characters in all of the lore. And she didn't, like, I, I'm still, like, super jazzed when you do that final quest where you fight Lord Mongrathod or whatever his name is at the end of that quest chain. And she, like, charges in and she's like, for the light or whatever she yells. I was like, yeah, the Idrin, you're the best. Right. But even in the um, the garrison campaign, where you because she's the one. I mean, you have you done the garrison campaign? I've done about uh, half of them, but I saw your videos on them. Oh, the, yeah, because the Sokrathar one, she's there with Maladar. I think it's Maladar, but she's definitely yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like there's like no like even attempt for it to be like interesting lore wise. It's just like you show up and you kill Sokrathar, and then it's like I think L the Idrin says something like this. City will be cleansed. Bye. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I wish I had more, but I don't know. Uh, one little detail that I found. I'm not sure if you actually found it on the Horde side because it requires a little bit of exploration because you don't, you, uh, you're not told, go this way. You have to sort of stumble upon it. Uh, it's basically one of the followers for the Horde and also one of the bodyguards. Uh, is a, a Sunsworn warlock. So she, basically, if I remember correctly, the Sunsworn were uh, basically Kel'Thas's elite yes. blo blood elves who, <clears throat> after Kel'Thas was defeated and, and the whole Sunwell debacle, they rejoined the, the blood elves. I found it kind of interesting that a Sunsworn warlock uh, uh, would join Lady Lia Adrin on this uh, quest, and she's probably not even the only one. Isn't that the, um, I know that there also in Teladar is an event, like a little rare event that you can stumble upon where it's, I think this might be the same one, but I'm not sure where, I think there are Sunsworn there, but they're like powering up like the Blood Golems, and one of them has like gone crazy and you fight them and that's like a rare? Uh, no, uh, I'm not sure if it's a rare or not, but it was a quest item now. I'm not sure if uh, it's the Sunsworn Warlocks or if they're just mages uh, mm, that okay. are powering the animal golems, but... Uh, there is a quest uh, as Horde. I'm not sure if it's also for the Alliance, where you go basically uh, help the help them at help the Draenei at a mine of them. It seems irrelevant, but then mm. you see um, that one one of uh, one of the leading archmages has has an apprentice, and the apprentice, yes, yeah, the apprentice has basically gone gone crazy and has uh, taken o taken over the mine and filled it with crazy arcane stuff, and. Uh, mm -hmm. When you defeat her, you'll see... I'm not sure if it's in the quest text or if it's like a little note that she drops. It's a, it's a letter you get after... Yeah. After e yeah. Where she basically... Where she, it's basically... It's basically a tear-stained letter or something like that where she's, where it said... Uh, Apprentice, you are, you are completely worthless and you are, and you are <laughs> completely stupid. And I hate you and I don't know why I even brought you here. Come back so you can go be a <laughs> clothes washer. Bye. <laughs> and to, to, to bring that back to Wrath, that reminded me of that quest in um, Dragonblight, I think, isn't it? Where um, you're you're fighting one of Maligos's, um mage dudes, and you kill him, and you get the letter later on. For the Horde and the Alliance, it's different, where it's like, look, 
Maligo said he'd kill my family unless I helped. Hmm. And um, the Alliance, when you give it to one guy, and he's like, oh, we'll make sure to tell the family. And I believe the Horde guy is like, serves him right. And, like, he drops a letter <laughs> and steps on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, reminds I, me, it reminded me of that. I think I remember that, yeah. Uh, the Horde and Raph is... Uh, I know I'm diverging, but the Horde and Raph is either uh, we're trying to be honorable or we're bloodthirsty maniacs. <laughs> It was funny though. He's like, I remember he was like, serves that bitch right or something. And he like crumples the letter and throws it on the ground. And the alliance one is like, oh my god, we'll make sure her family knows this is so terrible. I'm so sorry you had to do that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but that that chick was a sunsworn. Is that the one you're talking about? The one that uh, the random follower you stum you stumble across. Yeah, she's a sunsworn warlock, and she <laughs> and uh, you can actually take her as a bodyguard. She's a tank and a pretty awful one because she dies in about 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, but uh, she appears to other players as Sansone Warlock because she doesn't have her name when she appears to other players. Right. And uh, another part that I found interesting is she speaks to you in demonic. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because I played, like, I originally was on the Horde before I transferred. I initially played Warlords to 100 on Horde, and I got, like, literally all the followers I could get without the raid stuff. I, I, I remember this person, but I can't put my finger on the specifics, and it's really bothering me. Uh, she's a Warlock who, if you take her as a bodyguard, she grows wings, and she aggros every single enemy in <laughs> about 30 yards, and then says stuff in Demonic at you. <laughs> That's interesting. I wonder what she says because uh, warlocks actually know what they say. I read about. Uh, I'm not a warlock, but I read on Wowhead who a user basically constructed what she said based on previous demonic translations, and she basically says stuff like "I must protect the master" or stuff, or stuff generic stuff like that. Interesting. Oh God, I have to go. I have to. I'll have to see that afterwards. <sighs> So I think it's it's all Talador. I mean, Talador is again is like I mean we didn't bring this up in either of the the intro zones, but you know Talador again we see Gul'dan's doing shenanigans where you see him in the intro right. being like, "Ha ha, I'm evil!" Like it's basic. It's basically the gist of his story when you see him so far. I'm doing bad things. I'm Gul'dan. What did you expect? And Cadgar's like wringing his hands like, "Oh, I don't know why we let him go. I feel so bad about it." Yeah, that's also a little bit. I'm not sure if. I would call it exactly a departure from his character or not. I guess it's still in character, but one thing that uh, kind of upset me is in the previous lore, Gul'dan is uh, basically manipulating things from behind the scenes and turning people ag against each, o each other and doing things slowly and methodically. And now he... I guess it also ties in to the fact that the Iron Horde rejected him and he's on the phone with an angry kill, Jaden, that he's basically sort of rushing things. In Frostfire or in, Sh or in Shadow Moon, you see him mm -hmm. ordering Cho'Gol and Terngor to go gather these sources of magic, and he's basically or orchestrating the Burning Legion invasion in Talador, and he's a lot more direct Active. in his approach. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I honestly, I like that a little I because I love Gould. Spoiler alert, he's my favorite character. I think I mentioned like eight times already, but... <laughs> I like the subtle Gul'dan who's manipulating things. I also really like this Gul'dan who's like, right. I'm awesome. Like, I whooped I whooped Grom's ass, like, very easily in the cinematic. Um, I don't know. I, in, a, in a lot of ways, I feel like maybe this Gul'dan's more powerful, like, just from a power perspective than the other Gul'dan because, like you said, the orcs rejected him. But through circumstances of dimension differences because let's not even get into that nonsense but <laughs> the legion is more there in force already so he's already empowering stuff more and he's doing a lot more active hands-on things right. actively corrupting more people actively summoning like giant like pit lords and stuff in a lot of ways i feel like maybe this Gul'dan is more powerful than the one that we not that we didn't deal with them but in our universe i'm not sure how you would see that but mm. I take it as him, because he's doing more things and he's doing more powerful things, a lot, a lot of ways, to me, he seems like he's stronger. I'm not necessarily sure about that, because in our universe, he did raise up a bunch of islands <laughs> in the bottom of the ocean. Right. Hopefully he does that again! Come on, Blizzard, I want to see the Azara expansion. It's right in front of you, come on, just connect the dots. But, uh, you're right. 
That is true. Uh, one thing about Gul'dan, uh, it's, which is basically one of my interpretations of the character, and I wanted to hear your thoughts on it, is basically, yes, he is the most powerful w mortal warlock, but I don't think like I don't think he's uh, a combat oriented, so to say. I feel like he's powerful for power sake, so to say. Uh, for ex for example, uh, in the big cinematic where Grom kills Manoroth, he's basically just st stands there and lets Manoroth do his thing. Or uh, in uh, one of the novels in Tides of Darkness, he kills the Dragon Rider when in one hit, but he basically has to tell tell the Dragon Rider. Come closer, come closer, I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like, yes, he's he is incredibly powerful, but I feel like his magic isn't really directed towards combat, so, uh, that, as I said. Because if, if it was directed towards combat, I feel like he would have definitely succeeded in our universe in the Tomb of Sargeras, for example. Right. right that's a good point. I, I would agree, I would agree. He's one of those characters who's like... <laughs> Not to be, like, a little crude about it, but he's one of those characters that, like, blows his load, and then, like, <laughs> if you're still alive, he's in trouble. Like, if, if you're just fighting him, at least. Like, if you're not, like, if he's not, like, manipulating stuff, if you're like, I'm gonna fight you, Gul'dan, if he does his, like, giant thing, yeah. and you're alive, so he's in trouble. Like, because you have survived his big whatever he does. He definitely is not combat-oriented, and I don't think... D do you think he comes across that way in, in Warlords? I don't think he no, does no, even no. in Warlords, either. No, uh, there's also a scene I wanted to bring up. Uh, I'm skipping ahead a bit, but when Chogo betrays Gul'dan, uh, Gul uh, Gul'dan sort of ready readies a spell at him. Chogo, I think, reflects it and then kicks Gul'dan and then la laughs at him, and Gul'dan sort of flees. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. It's it's it definitely seems like it's one of the, that specific cases. Him, I think, being like, I did not even see that coming because. The thing I love about Gul'dan's character is he's so power hungry. He's so this and that and corrupting, but he can never he never sees that like the people he surrounds himself with, not like the people he's controlling and all that stuff, but like Terran Gore and and Shogal, they're just mm -hmm. like him. And he doesn't seem to see he doesn't seem to like perceive that they could possibly turn against him, which always when they do it, he seems that's why I think that scene he's like, "Oh shit. Like I didn't even see that coming." Like if I was Gul'dan, that's how I think he comes across. And I mean, we never see the confrontation between Terengor and Gul'dan, but Terengor in the raid, in the or in the, in, the in the instance, does make a reference. Gul'dan's a fool. He never could appreciate these powers of the souls. And I don't. I think one of his biggest flaws is the people he thinks he's are his subordinates are just as power hungry as he is, and he cannot conceive that they would turn on him. Yeah, which is also a bit weird because I think I remember uh, like a few lines in Rise of the Rise of the Horde when. Uh, he basically calls up the people to form his shadow to form his shadow council. He basically says, "People who are just as blo as uh, power hungry and uh, uh, willing to sacrifice everything as me, and yet he still doesn't really realize that they can also turn against him." Yeah, that's his one big blind spot. Is he knows these people can do it, just not against like, I know all these people are bad, but they'll never turn on me. I'm too powerful. I'm Gul'dan. Which is why part of that character I really like is because of that, that he doesn't see that. Well, both but Master and Apprentice are really flawed. As people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is, uh, I mean, yeah. So that's basically, we, like, beat Talador to death. That's, like, the entire Talador story. Well, there's also a little side story uh, while you're, uh, I think, I don't know if it's oh, the yeah. Iron Horde stage or the uh, Gul'dan stage, but... Uh, you're basically stum I think you st basically stumble across a Draenei village that is, uh, is under attack by the Arakoa, mm -hmm. and you basically stumble into the Arakoa storyline. Yeah, I really like that, where you're like, you're not sure what's going on. You're just like, oh, this village is under attack, and you show up in the Arakoa. You're like, you find out that they're like using their ion cannon weapon to like <laughs> decimate towns. Yeah. And it's uh, it was a. I really like the introduction to the outcasts too, because I wasn't expecting it. I don't know how it is for the horde, but for the alliance, when you're saving the 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 Drenai, you do all the quests there, and then you go into the mine, and it's all with the Drenai character from the alliance's perspective. Mm -hmm. And as you're like channeling the object in the in the bottom of the mine at the end, he reveals himself to be. I don't remember who it is. It's one of the it's characters. Iskar. It's Iskar. Is is it Iskar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same as. I don't know if he is disguised as anything other than a Draenei for the Horde, but... No, he's actually uh, a Draenei woman, disguised as a Draenei yes. woman for the Horde as well. 
I really like that reveal because I didn't, I, I didn't see. I knew that there was something weird about this woman when I was doing it on the beta. I was like, she's probably a quest giver who just wants to kill me at the end. Yeah. But I'm with Iskar. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I really like that introduction to them. Yeah. And speaking of uh, the Arakoa, Spires of Arak is definitely my favorite zone. Yes, I agree completely. It is my favorite overall zone story by by a mile. Uh, and not just rega in regarding the storyline, in my opinion, but also the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you play with uh, in-game sounds or not, but the, back yes. the, the background music is very chilling, very sort of sort of mis mysterious, which fits the outcasts and the fact that you're basically most of the time in a shadowed forest. It fits mm -hmm. really well. Yeah, it's it's great, and I, I it's... You can really tell the story is like completely different from like the rest of Warlords because the person who wrote it, like because I I followed him on Twitter, I've talked with him on Twitter before. Mm -hmm. um, the, he only wrote that storyline, like that's all that he did. He's like, I wrote the entire Arakoa thing. All of that's just me. I'm the only one that did it. I didn't do anything else. And it's I it honestly feels like it's completely divorced from the rest of the storyline, yeah. um, in a good way, and I really like it. Yeah, the only real relation to the Iron Horde is the fact that the Shattered Hand Clan exists mm -hmm. there. Uh, uh, and, bas and basically the fact uh, that at various points throughout the storyline while you're fighting the wing, Darakoa, the Shattered Hands are sort of there and inconveniencing you and you're told basically go, go kill them. And <laughs> right. also after you... Uh, obtain Terox powers, the first thing you do is fight the Shattered Hand. Yeah. You fight Kargath and then you lose. <laughs> so, oops. But yeah, I don't know. The Shattered Hand always felt like... They didn't feel forced, because obviously it, it made sense that they were there. That's where yeah, they live, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But they always felt like just an afterthought. Like, oh, by the way, fighting the, we're fighting the pure Arakoa. We got to deal with these shitheads over here that are bothering us, too. Go fight them. Yeah, de definitely. And I... Even though they were basically more or less filler, I didn't really feel annoyed or uh, no. or anything at their presence there. Yeah, exactly. It was. I mean, it was overall great. I mean, I, I we don't really have to get into specifics of the story, but it's just I I couldn't think of one part in that entire story of the Arakoa that I didn't like. The only problem I even had of the entire zone was Admiral Taylor randomly being dead. Hmm. For no reason about from this random necromancer that they still haven't explained. Whose connection to anything I don't know, and I don't know why he's dead. I don't know why they killed him. I still don't know that, and I wish I did because it makes no sense. My only problem with the uh, zone was the fact that it was the only zone with no garrison ability, and it's right. the, and it's the zone that I died so many times in because of that. Really? Well, because I was mostly used to when I'm in a punch, I can summon my guards or summon my shredder or summon this magical arcane orb. Well, right. In Spires of Iraq, I could summon a little goblin that could <laughs> sell me a potion. <laughs> or you can get a specialized hearthstone, which is even worse. Like yeah. an even more worthless garrison ability. It was definitely weird to make that zone the, yeah. the one to have the randomness. Although one thing I'm not complaining about is that at one point the goblin uh, sold me a 28 slot bag. Yep, she also sells, um, I think, a follower? She sells something else really important, yeah, too. Yeah, I also got the follower. It's basically an Apis Guardian. That's what it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was definitely cool. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, otherwise uh, the, gob the goblins at the southern end of the zone felt like an interesting little distraction. It was, and they used to be... Um, I don't really even know what they're called now, but they used to be the... Um, Ugh, the pinch whistle. Yeah, pinch whistle. Is that what they are now? It, uh, the, it's uh, the city's the town is called Pinch Whistle Gearworks. They used to be. Then they used to be somebody else. They used to be. Um, oh God, I can't remember what. Oh shit! They were goblins that you saw before on the horde side. They used. That's who they used to be. Mm. I can't remember who they are, and it really bothers me now. But they changed it, like really arbitrarily, and I don't know why. I remember seeing people talking about. On Twitter before it came out, they were like, "Oh, is is so and so supposed to be there canonically?" And they're like, "No, it's somebody completely different." And then the pinch whistles randomly were were made, right? But they all used to be. Oh, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look it up because it's really bothering me. But I liked it because it was like a connection back to. Uh, it was the goblins in um, 
it was one of the goblins in Mr. Pandaria. Mm. <sighs> oh, well, I can't remember who, but it was definitely a, a goblin we had met before, and these ones were new ones. Right, right. Which really, I don't know. I don't know why they changed it. Well, I also like that it was a, a little fun distraction from the overall seriousness of Spires of Iraq, because Spires of Iraq was a great story, but also kind of dark. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, it was really dark. Yeah. And, uh, and the goblins were more like, ha ha, there's, there's weirdness going on. We're goblins. Woo! Like the only story they ever make for goblins and gnomes. Like, we're weird. <laughs> Look at all these crazy mechanical things we did. Kind of reminds me of that uh, random gnome expedition in Noldom. You remember that? <laughs> right. Just show up for, like, two quests. And um, you, like, have that Katamari Damasi random, <laughs> random part that I still don't understand. And you murdered them, most of them. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but yeah, so we got we got um you know we got more background on the Apexus, which we never knew even what the, I don't even I didn't think we knew what they were in BC. We just knew that there were Apexus crystals that once made people smart. Uh, I, if I if um I know because I did the lore facts on them before Warlords of Draenor was released, where uh, I remember researching it and finding out that the Apexus. It was revealed back then that they were basically an ancient, more, far more advanced civilization of Arakoa that inhabited at Blades Edge Mountains, or who? Oh, know. we already we that was known. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well. Yeah. The more you know, you should go watch that because I didn't know that. Now I learned something. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I kind of compared them to sort of the way I'm a really big, a real big history nerd, so I mostly compared them to the way medieval Europe saw ancient Rome as this sort of mm. wondrous, uh, incredible thing that they have absolutely no idea how it managed to actually stop existing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I do, definitely. That's definitely the, the vibe that they gave off. I didn't... I had no idea that that we knew that they were Arakoa. I just thought they were, like, random... <laughs> random mysterious people that left these crazy crystals that the Elgers wanted to get smart. Yeah, uh, we knew that they, they were Arakoa, we knew they were bla in Blade's Engine, we knew they were ancient, and that's about all that we knew. Mm, okay, interesting. I didn't know that. But yeah, we got more background on them, which was cool. Mm -hmm. um, I love seeing the civil war between the Arakoas, the, the different yeah. groups. I think that was great. Further emphasized in the story that came out later, which is, like I said, my favorite story that they've ever written, the short story, um, mm -hmm. Apoc Apocrypha. It's great, but it's not really my all-time favorite. My all -time no, I, I get you. My all-time favorite is the short story Unbroken. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but anyway, uh, there were f a few subtle touches, especially in the short story and in the zone where how the uh, adherents of Rukmar are basically ruling the Arako as a di dictatorship and. Uh, Basically, because I lived in a country that was once a dictatorship, I saw a lot of parallels because we get taught a lot, a lot of that stuff in school, especially the revisionist history in regards to Terok. Right. I love that about Terok's story. That was, like, I, I didn't go into the expansion thinking I was going to like this zone story as much as I came out loving it. Like, all the yeah. stuff with Terok, and you find out that, hey, he was never that bad of a guy. He was, like, good and bad. Like, once again, the whole... Like, dichotomy between the Arakoa, good and bad, light and dark, flying and not flying, blah, 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 blah. Like, and especially in 6.2, when, when the survivors of each clan have joined up and they become the Order of the Awakened. Um, you know, the two sides coming together like the Arakoa used to be. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it, was, it was pretty great. And also, like, the uh, flashbacks you get to, to see through Tarak's eyes where he... And they're basically told, like, an old sort of legend you'd, you would hear in say your grandma your grandma's house or something like that about mm -hmm. how he butchered the blood mains and uh, how he was cast cast off from skyreach and the story about about his daughter all of that i really really loved yes oh i found it uh the clutch pops mm. the, the the goblins rivet clutch pop he was um he was on the the horde warship that flew into dead forest it was him and a random niece that he had were the ones before they changed it, and they, they don't know why they did, but I, I just I was looking it up and I found it. Well, I have to say that goblins are some of the least memorable, memorable characters in the lore. 
to me. Yes, that's unfortunately true. The sassy hard wrench still needs to be trade princess. I'm never gonna stop thinking she should be the she should have been the leader instead of Wes's stupid face. Trade prince Gallywex. Or make the player the leader. That that would have been innovative. Yes, at the time. that would have been cool. Yeah. Uh, and and I also love the gob squad and the little interactions you have with them. You know them? Yes, definitely. I think they don't they show up later in Warlords. Uh, I think they have one garrison campaign as the horde, but uh, I don't. I haven't reached that point yet with them. They uh yeah they did. Oh shoot. They, yeah they did though. Uh, one little detail I liked with the Gob Squad, which was in their quest in the Twilight Highlands and in uh, Ashar, is that you can basically talk to the leader and uh, he, uh, he tells you, yeah boss, what do you want? And you have the option to make a series of complicated hand gestures. <laughs> and when you do that, they either scramble around in, ra in random directions and then look confused at you, or they say something like, what did you just say about my mother? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, one point, I, one fact I really did like, uh, sir, I think the explosions gave us away. We don't need hand gestures. <laughs> oh, goblins. See, this is how they can make the... I don't know. This goes back to a video I made about goblins and gnomes where I'm really bummed that they forced them into such a stereotypical corner when they could be like, stop funny stuff like this. Right, right. I don't know, but now we're like completely off topic. <laughs> so I think that's Spires of Iraq. Is there anything else you want to say about that zone? Um, I did find kind of surprising how Kargath was able to defeat Terok, basically. I found Yeah, pretty... It was... Mm. Mm. I still don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I guess he's a raid boss. He has to be powerful. <laughs> right. But I guess it's more like he doesn't have any like special thing that makes like he doesn't have the dark star, he doesn't have fell magic, he doesn't have magical love powers like Black Hand does. It also reminds me, I'm going off tra off topic a bit, but uh, in the 5.4 trailer where when Garrosh fights Terran Zhu and basically Terran Zhu uppercuts him and beats him up a little bit, my first thought about that was wasn't really oh this is cool or oh this is interesting was. I'm not sure if they really intended to make the final raid boss look weak. You know. What oh I mean? yeah. Mhm. Mm Is that how you thought about Kargath too? The pr the problem with Kargath is we saw him in Lords of War. We saw what he was capable of. of. Yes, he was a great warrior, but he basically had to resort to a little bit of trickery to defeat that giant orc champion he didn't defeat him because he was level question mark while the orc champion was only level four or something like that right yeah and it kind of makes his raid fight i mean i guess it makes sense they put him back in the the arena and the arena stuff is going on but yeah it's uh once again initially he survives that and he escapes but they <laughs> killed him because i i still think they are they cut the story of Warlords in half, yeah. lengthwise. It's despite them saying, like, there's more after 6.2. Frankly, I don't believe them. I think that's, like, the end of the main story. Once we do whatever happens, Gul'dan escapes or whatever, because there's still, like, no indication of what Gul'dan's going to do. He stops Archimonde and then it's like, boo, bye. Yeah, really, unless they they plan to sort of to summon kill Jaden and Sargeras at the same time, I have no idea how they can go up from uh, 6.2. In this expansion. Yeah, how can you go? How can you go past Ark like fight like Archimonde? Like, how can they do another thing and make it even close to as threatening? You fight uh, Gul'dan riding, kill Jaden riding the <laughs> Deathwing. <laughs> now Lich King is back and he's evil now again. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows what could have happened with Nerzul's body? You never. That's know. that's true. That's true. It's, it's the it's the alternate version of Lich King. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Spires of Iraq was great. Mm hmm And then we get to Negrand. Negrand was, uh, I, uh... It was okay. Yeah, it was definitely okay. I can't say that it was extraordinary. I can't say that it was bad, but I can say that it was okay. 
Um, yeah, I think this is the zone that has the biggest, the most glaring example of my issue of making the two stories the same for each faction. Because even though you are like doing small, different little things, ultimately it's almost copy paste exactly the same. Not any more indicative mm -hmm. uh, indicative than um, oh, what's that town? Lockrath. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. right in the middle of the zone where the same thing happens at the same time for both factions, and it can't possibly have happened for both factions at the same time. Right. Both factions cannot control the town at the same time, and just present it as that's how it happens. Well, technically, in-game, at the moment, after you completely finish the storyline, the town is still filled with uh, Iron Horde mobs fighting your people. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, if you do it as a Horde, it's Horde, it, you, you go there, Horde forces have taken over, blah, 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 and then you find out it's all a trick, whatever. Yeah. But the Alliance is like, the Alliance forces have won, Urel's like, eh, yay, we won! And then the same thing happens. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, uh, kind of reminded me of, I guess, Burning Crusade or Vanilla WoW was the introduction to the zone. It wasn't, oh, let's set up an outpost there. It was, check out this caravan. You remember? Yeah, and then you find out that it got attacked and they stole the plans to your yeah. outpost building. Yeah. Uh, and also, I don't know if this was part of the story or just random, but... After I completed the quest, I got basically run over by a giant, a giant pack of uh, Warsong Wolf Riders who... <laughs> they just wandered through the zone, I think. Gotten run over by them before, too. Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, I, thought, I, I thought it uh, was supposed to happen at, at the time. Not that they would be wandering uh, mm. out in the zone. Because they push you uh, out and say, Out of the way, peon, even though I'm a blood elf, not a fucking orc, but... You know, <laughs> I, I do think because I, I do remember. I think you're right because there's a part where you run up and they're like, "So and so approaching, yeah. watch out." I think that's when they spawn. Then mm, it's possible. It's possible. I know that at the entrance in, Agra, in the ground because I had to do. I had to wander through that uh, through that part of the zone on several occasions because I have the stables as a building and uh, several quests take you there. There's two wolf riders who, whenever a player passes through the, through the, I guess uh, there's a bridge linking uh, Talador to uh, Nagrant, they yell, intruders approaching, and they aggro the yes. guy. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, one thing that did annoy me and really highlighted the difference that I mentioned earlier, that you're not a commander, you're basically a champion, was... Uh, when you show up uh, and say, and Frost says, Commander, we need to attack Lockraft or whatever it's called. And you say, fine, I'm being ordered around again. Not Nothing unexpected. But when you get there and you find out that the town is already taken, you know, at least they should have told you before that they were planning to attack the damn thing. You know what you know I, I, I'm, I'm saying? Yes, the Alliance one is like that, too, where it's like, <laughs> the first thing you get is like, hey, it turns out your garrison forces have taken over a town. And I was like, oh, they were? They did? I didn't know that was even happening, but good, we won, I guess. Yeah, uh, uh, and it makes absolutely no sense from a military, military standpoint, because you're bloody supreme commander of the expedition into Drown, or you would think you would know about that, because it's a major, pretty major footstep until defeating Garrosh. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely... I don't I don't think they succeeded in their whole... You have been the champion in the past, but now you're the leader. It's like, no, you're really not. You're, you're called the leader, but you're still doing all the grunt work. Yeah, uh, you're basically... Uh, you're basically doing the grunt work or being a... being a... really, really... bad quest giver. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. There's like like a lot of the the zone the zone storylines are like not really eventful. Like there's some of them that just don't even matter at all. Like the Ring of Blood one, or not Ring of Blood, Ring of Trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just it's not it's not that it's bad. It's more that it's like uh, it's it's not a great final zone, which is more extenuated when you know that it wasn't originally the final zone. Tanan was the final zone before they cut that out and made it patch content. Mm. Um, 
one thing that really did annoy me about Nagrand was uh, how Ergon was portrayed and uh, I don't know exactly how it goes for the Alliance but how you and Drekfar basically interact with uh, Oshogun and let me go into de detail a little bit basically in the novels you uh, there's a, there's this whole scene when Velen comes to the orcs in peace in Rise of the Horde and says, "Look, Oshogun is ba is just our spaceship, and there's a Naru inside, and we respect the fact that your ancestors also lived there. But you know, it's also our stuff." And the orcs react with, uh, well, basi basically they almost burn him at the stake, almost. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was really annoyed uh, in Nag Nagran because. Burning Crusade portrayed Oshogun really well. It's just a giant diamond and uh, it has an entrance, but the entrance is basically like you'd expect the entrance to a gi to diamond to be. Only if you really go through that entrance, you'd discover that, oh, it's actually a Naru ship. But right. in Warlords of Draenor, the entrance is it's out, is, out in, is out in the open. There's orcs mining Oshog Oshogun. Uh... Uh, there's a lot of Draenei stuff over there that's not even barely hidden and uh, the whole interaction with Drekfar in the novels Drekfar was the one most ad most adamant to basically burn Velen at the stake and in Warlords of Draenor Drekfar basically says we have to save the Naru and Oshogun come on yeah <laughs> it's pretty much the exact same thing from the Alliance perspective you're just with um... Nobundo Nabundo, there you go. Mm. That that makes sense from from Nabundo's perspective because he's a Draenei, but from yep. Drekfar's perspective and from the perspective of, look, it's obvious in Warlords of Draenor, it's a Draenei ship, not a giant diamond. It doesn't make sense in universe. It's also weird that the War Songs are the one doing that there because they're also doing like weird, very similar to Shadow Moon magic where they're like corrupting yeah. shit, and it's like I was I remember playing that in the beta and being like, I don't uh, like you. <laughs> seemingly didn't know how to do this. That's why you went to the Shadow Moon clan and you need them you need their help to do this. Because yeah. it's really powerful. Now you're just in mass just doing it, like corrupting all the shit and doing all this mining all the stuff where before you had even like you had no idea that it was like this, like you said. It's yeah. just yeah, I, I I didn't find it as upsetting now that but now that I think about it, you're right. It it didn't make a lot of sense. Like how would they know that? How, uh, I mean how would they know the magic that they're doing there? Why are they mining it? What is that serving a purpose? Just like, what are they doing there? Uh, well, I guess it's one of those plot holes that is explained by Blizzard as either things are different and thus they are not the same, or Garrosh said spoilers. <laughs> bad guys doing bad things to a good place. Go stop them! Mm -hmm. Speaking of Garrosh, what uh, did you think about the whole assault on Gromashar and the final battle? Uh... Um, the actual event going through the place was fine. I actually liked it quite a bit. Mm. The end, I hate it, especially as an Alliance character, because you, you, the last time you've seen Thrall as an Alliance character is in Shatra. No, in, not in Shatra. It, I swear to God, is he, is he in Shatra? <laughs> I think it, I think he does show up in Shatra at one point. Like, at the end, after you do the, the scene where Ogrim dies. But that's the last time you've seen him as the Alliance. And then you're fighting Garrosh with Yorel, and then he just shows up and wins the day. And I was like, wow, what a... God, really, Blizzard? You have to... I understand why you want to give this to Thrall. Like, I get it. But you took away, like, all of the importance of me fighting him and Yorel fighting him. Like, I fought Garrosh just as long as Thrall has as the player. Maybe longer. If you're yeah, right. exactly. Uh, I have to. I have to say, yeah, it's definitely a lot more involved on on the horde side, and basically, since Thrall is already pretty much everywhere, it doesn't really come as that much of a surprise when he interrupts your battle with Garrosh. Once once Garrosh basically starts kicking the shit out of you, uh, and I also really. Really love the the final cin cinematic and Gerard saying yes, uh, you made me who I am, etc. Because he's totally right, and I still I swear to God I had this argument with Howie on about Wayther's lore. 
It's all Thrall's fault, guys. It's all Thrall's mm -hmm. fault, and they don't acknowledge it. They barely reference it where Thrall's like, no, oh, not anymore, or whatever crap he says at the end. Like, it's all, it, it's your fault. You made Garrosh the way that he is. You didn't tell him, you told him a whitewashed history of his father, and he, he did all of this shit, Thrall. Take some responsibility, you bitch. Yeah, I, yeah, basically. Although, I do agree with the fact that Thrall should be, should have been the one to end his life. Yeah, I get, I get why they made Thrall. It's just the, act, I mean, the that's my favorite cinematic. The cinematic is fantastic. Mm, yeah. But, um... It's just, especially for the Alliance, it's really like, you're fighting him with Yorel, and you're like, yeah, we're winning, and then he starts beating the shit out of you, and then Thrall shows up. And I'm like, oh, okay, Thrall, take it away. Uh, did you do the zone first on the Alliance or on the Horde? I did the Horde first. Oh. But, um, so, yeah, like I said, it's I wasn't, although, I think I did it on the beta first as Alliance, and that might have been the very first time I did it. On live, I on live I leveled Horde first, and then I transferred to raid with Howie and Dunn with mm. on the Alliance. Mm. Right, right. Uh, that's also one of my. I'm not sure exactly how I feel about uh, killing Garrosh. Not exactly that they killed him, but that they killed him when they did. Uh, yes, it makes sense that it, he would be at the end of the of your questing experience you deal with the guy who caused all these events etc but i feel like um maybe it would have made more sense and I, this is also tying into one of my problems with uh, 6.2 not to uh corrupt the iron horde so quickly to infor to enforce grom uh, uh being defeated by Gul'dan. basically I'm not sure if uh, Gera should have been killed so soon, or if maybe they should have waited with him a, li a little bit more and then killed him some some other time and basically drag it uh, drag it out a little bit because otherwise the whole Iron Horde corruption seems a little bit rushed. Yeah, definitely. I I swore up and down what they were gonna do was complete 6.0. All of the shenanigans happened. We were basically beat the Iron Horde, which we still do. We basically beat them at the end of 6.0. Mm. Um, and then have I did not think Rom was gonna reject him Gul'dan again. I thought he was gonna drink the blood. And then I, the way I thought Garrosh was gonna die was trying to stop that, and then getting killed, having known that he couldn't stop history from repeating itself. That no matter how hard he tried, he did all of this crazy shit. But no matter all what he could, what he tried to do, history will always go in a certain way, which kind of plays into the whole idea Blizzard's going for now with. Gold and controlling everything, and all of the stuff is happening like before, albeit slightly differently from our universe. But the basic, like notes of the story, are going toward the same way. Um, I, I thought Garrosh was going to get killed by his own father after he mm. drank the blood, and I, I felt like <laughs> mainly because I hate Garrosh so much. I think I, I understood why Thrall had to kill him, and I guess that's a great vindication for Thrall. But I would have loved it much better. I thought it would have been much much greater. If Grosh died to his dad, knowing he failed in his ultimate mission. Well, like you mentioned in your videos with uh, Warlocks that you would rather join the Shadow Council, I would <laughs> much rather join Garrosh, to be honest. <laughs> right. Because uh, I'm really kind of a fan of the sort of old horde ideal of we're mm, blood crazy butchers, not uh, we're family. You know what I mean. Right. Yeah. I, I totally get that. I, I mean, I think it's. Which is why it's kind of a bummer how they, not to get like super meta on the whole story of like in of the whole game, but it's kind of a bummer how they made Garage go in this direction where they started him out as kind of like, I don't know, I liked how he was kind of like, hey, I'm an orc, but I'm not a douchebag. I mean, I'm kind of a douchebag, but I'm not evil. But then they were just like, fuck it, he's evil, he's crazy, he's doing, he's using shot powers, he's going batshit nuts, he's corrupting himself, he's going to other dimensions. <laughs> Like they, I, I like the original, the beginnings of Garage, and then they just went freaking spiraling out of control. Yeah, uh, yeah, I completely agree. Um, now uh, should we talk about the Garrison campaigns and the later quests and six point one and six point two? Uh, sure. I mean, for the Garrison campaign, spoiler alert: eighty percent of it doesn't matter to the actual story. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like. The only, like, through line you have is the little hints of, like, 
the Iron Horror is trying to get this artifact, and then like once you do it, like four more other irrelevant quests, and then it's like, hey, they're getting closer to get this artifact. What is this artifact? We don't know what it is. Right. And then you do more quests, and it's like, hey, it's this thing in Gorgon. You better go there. Because mm. you did, you, you haven't completed it yet, have you? Uh, the Garrison campaign. Like no. I said, I only done, did about half of it, but I, I saw, I've seen all of your videos on it. So what happened? Oh, okay. Yeah. So then you go and you find out it's the heart of Gorgorek, which is like this. This yeah. in this, it's like the exact same thing that you get in Gorgon that was destroyed, but um. Yeah. Did they ever address that plot point? I don't remember. In which way? Uh, as in, if I remember correctly, in the Garrison campaign, you just find it. You see, oh, it's bad and it's evil and it's making the Iron Horde stronger. What do we do? Help. Uh, basically, what happens is you get the Heart of Gorgorak, you have it in your garrison, it gets attacked by Azuka Blade Fury, she steals it, hmm. um, she takes it to Gorgorak, resurrects Gorgorak with it, and then I don't know what happens to it, I think she kind of, I think it's just useless at that point, because it, it, has, it has resurrected the guy already, um, and the finale is you fight Gorgorak with no fanfare at all, he doesn't even do any abilities, you just fight him and kill him in Talador at the gates to, uh, to Non Jungle. And then you kill Azuka Blade Fury, and then you have that really weird standoff between your faction's leaders and Grom. Right. Where he's like, ha-ha, come to Tanan if you want to fight me. And my whole thought during that process was, he's right here, he's out in the open, shoot him. Where's our flyers that were just around? Get him, kill mm -hmm. Grom, we win. Yeah, that's, like, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because then he's like, and then, cause the, the, you, yeah, I think it's Duratan or Urel is like, we're going to chase you into Tanan. I was like, you're going to sacrifice all this troop, all these troops and all this resource to get him. He's right there. Yeah, um, one uh, way I would have changed this, the story of uh, 6.1 and the final garrison campaigns in 6.2 was ba basically uh, have it not happen so quick so quickly so to say like like i've mentioned before basically i think it would have been better if 6.1 was if azuka blade fury didn't happen in the Genson campaign and they replaced it with who knows what else and 6.1 was uh either let's go find Farallon and do shit there or uh let's uh begin the attack on the iron horse stronghold in tanan and Basically, the whole 6.1 would be moving our siege engines to uh, the gate to Tanan and uh, the Burning Blade clan fighting us along the way and finally us killing Azuka Blade Fury. And then, and then maybe 6.2 would be... This is, this is how I would have done it, I feel. Uh, you, get, you get your shipyard, but instead of uh, going for Tanan because... You you say well we don't have enough uh, manpower or resources let's go to this magical place in the north uh, east of of Draenor named Farallon and uh, collect us there and basically make it a giant battleground between the Horde the Alliance and the Iron Horde uh, and then and then basically have six point three be uh, uh, end in Farallon and in six point one have Gul'dan do stuff in the background and then in six point three have Gul'dan make his move and uh, such, in my honest opinion. Yeah, they could have, um, you know, they could have even said, like, hey, Azuka, we're just, we're, we're, we've been tracking Azuka after she's been doing this shit behind the scenes because Grom's still not out in the open right after. Grom's, like, kind of retreated after you whooped his ass in Blackrock, uh, whatever the shit, Foundry and High Mall being destroyed. Azuka's doing stuff. She went to this really weird island that supposedly has all of the stuff, and you follow her there, and the Horde's there, and they're like, hey, we're going to fight the Horde and the Alliance, too, because they always fight each other. Yeah. Um, you're fighting the Zuka, too, and like you said, Gul'dan's in the back doing Gul'dan things. And it's like, yeah, it definitely would have been, I think... I don't know if I agree that it was too fast. I just think that it was... It was not... There wasn't enough of it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if... I, like, I guess I don't think it was necessarily too fast, just that there wasn't enough build up. It was kind of like, hey, Carter Gorgorak, Azuka Blade Fairy, she's built to be like the super powerful enemy and they even, like the devs even called her like on par with the other warlords. Yeah. And then you just like kill her with no fanfare and then it's, oh, well, she's dead. Ha ha ha, come fight me in Tanan. Okay, bye, Grom. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, God, I had a... F 
Yeah, uh, ba basically, the way I see the way they uh, they made the 6.1 and 6.2 is basically they made they made they are making the same mistake they made during Burning Crusade, where the first major raid patch was also the major villain. Yeah. And like I mentioned before, I have no idea how they're going to move on from Archimond. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really. I still think they're they're lying. I still they they gotta be faking it because where do you go after you fight Archimon and presumably are killing him in the Nether, which is like permadeath. Yeah. Like, how, where are you gonna go after permanently killing Archimon? I, I I don't know. I honestly cannot think where they could go. Let's go. F the Zandalari trolls are back. <laughs> they never die. Oh my god, I figured out why this expansion is not as good as the others. It doesn't have a dungeon filled with trolls. <laughs> <sighs> I miss those. Vulgin well, you know, Vulgin Vulgin's it's... Been, Vulgin should have been the emperor of the trolls instead of the war chief of the war. Of the war. <laughs> Dude, Lorthamar. Lorthamar for war chief. <laughs> I always wanted him to be war chief, but they're like, oh, let's go with the complete obvious person. Yeah. So, um... Well, yeah, so... <laughs> That's the garrison campaign, a whole lot of nothing, followed by a complete anticlimactic ending. Yeah. What did you think of uh, the legendary quests and the uh, Venturi 6.2? Uh, the legendary quests, I think, is great. I think it is the standout um, singular story. I, I like, I th my distinction is the overall story in a zone is Spires of Iraq by far. Yeah, yeah. The specific story I like the most is the legendary quest chain. Mm. Um, I, I, cause no surprise, it's all about Gul'dan. He's my dude. I like him a lot. I think he's great. Um, Cadgar is a little Mary Sue for me in this expansion. He does way, he does ridiculous things. He seems to, uh, granted, he's really knowledgeable. He's really powerful in the lore. I don't want to make him seem like he should be some scrub, but he's like, he time stops all of Shadrath. He like <laughs> destroys all of Blackhand's little operations in Tanan by flooding the area. He, he does a lot of really powerful things. And he comes across as... And, and they, ma they made him, like, this really weird, like, snarky, but stupidly immature character. Like, not so fast, Gul'dan! Like, I swear to God, when he talks to, when he talks to Kargath in the very intro of Tanan, when he says something like, like, uh, Kargath is like, there was only 99, and he's like, we'll have to get the last one later. And then he... <laughs> And he says, like, not so fast, Gul'dan, or whenever he says it, I swear to God. I said this in my video, too. He reminded me of, like, Aladdin, like, from the Disney cartoon, where he's like, not so fast, Jafar. Like, it was so cheesy. It's, I, I don't know. I don't like how kind of silly they made him. Uh, in a way, it sort of makes sense, because his character was aged up 30-plus years by Mediv. But yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't make sense because he lived 30 plus years after that. <laughs> right. Um, I'm not. I I can't really talk about uh, Cadgar's magical powers, uh, except that they seem to be sort of, especially since he now wields Atiesh, which in the previous lore was established to be wielded by Medivh's son. I feel like. Nope, never happened. That. Yeah. We do not speak of that person, Terranor. He, hmm. well, it's like Voldemort. I feel like I feel like they're sort of forcing a few characteristics of Medan on Cadgar, especially the power aspects. Not too many so far, and not too unbelievable, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't have said they're unbelievable. It's just, it's just kind of more like. <laughs> We're in an unwinnable situation. Q Cadgar do some crazy shit and you get away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which is like literally the entire introduction of, of Warlords of Zenora, by the way. Cadgar doing not so shit to let, to let you escape. Yeah. Uh, one fact um, I think they were going with in this expansion is you're basically the commander. The commander. I think they were really, really trying to mirrored the dynamic between Cadgar and Turalyon in Beyond the Dark Portal, because mm. in Beyond the Dark Portal, Turalyon is the commander of the Alliance expedition, but Cadgar is technically is Turalyon's boss in terms of military, military rank. And he and a lot of, of the stuff that happens in Beyond the Dark Portal is because 
Khadgar Kat- says so, even though Turalyn is doing most of, most of the shit, so to say. Um, and yeah, I, that's think, int- I hadn't even considered that. That's interesting. And yeah, you're basically the commander in this expansion, and Khadgar really has almost nothing to do with you moving in, say, Gorgrond or... Uh, or in Spires of Iraq, although he does have some involvement in Taldor and in the Nagrand, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But he's yeah, he's almost exclusively about Gul'dan. Yeah, he's pretty much fulfilling the same role he had in Beyond the Dark Portal too. Uh, while the Alliance expedition was dealing with the Horde and holding them in place, Khadgar is looking for ways to st- stop their plan to travel to other planets in Beyond the Dark Portal and stop them to travel to other planets in this universe right yeah yeah i think it's i think it's great i love that they brought garona back too yeah, um yeah i think she I, i'm i'm glad that they did it in the way that they did you know she's totally under Gul'dan's control and you have you break it in 6.1 and then she joins up with you totally makes complete sense it's like completely like lore consistent <coughs> Um, yeah, I, I'm glad she's back. Um, I I know you. Ha- it seems like you you had a problem with, uh, or you would have a problem with how easily Gul'dan just <laughs> takes Grom out, like in the cinematic, like oh. so easily, like ha ha. And then he's already like, all right, I'm done with you. I got to talk to Cat. I got to talk to what's his face now, Kilrog. Well, no, not necessarily because um, I feel like we've mentioned before, Gul'dan is not necessarily a combat type of warlock, but. If he was going to go alone to offer Grom- Gromash the demon blood again, I feel like he, especially after what happened with Manoroth and with the angry kill Jaden on the phone, he would have taken at least some precaution, or at least would have considered, yeah, he might refuse. So <laughs> right. I think it it makes sense, and it's it's in it's in character for him to smack uh, to basically pin down Gromash. Uh, it might not have been in character if uh, after he pinned down Gromash, the entire Iron Horde started uh, charging him and he then burned them all to death or something, but that didn't happen. Yeah, that's true. Like, nobody goes and rushes to attack him. I, that's interesting. I, you're right. That is kind of weird. It would he Like, at least one person should have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, probably not the Bleeding Hollow Orcs who are there who... We're basically following Kilrog's, Kilrog's leadership, but we saw a few Black Rock Orcs in the mm-hmm. background. You know, now that I think about it, when I was mentioning how I wanted Garrosh to die, I would have loved if that legendary cinematic where Grom is being forced to watch Kilrog drink the blood and freaking out about it. I would have really liked if it was Garrosh getting stopped by Gul'dan and having to watch Grom drink the blood. Like I granted that cinematic in the legendary quest chain was great. It's it's like my second favorite one behind the gra- the garage one. But I mean, I wasn't too surprised that Kilrog was like, yeah, whatever, bro, I'll drink it. <laughs> like yeah, it wasn't as shocking as I think they thought it was going to be when they made it. But I mean, it was still. I mean, it was it is what it is. I just I, I think it would have been more impactful. And I just maybe because I have this really weird like vindictive streak that I want to see garage. <laughs> Be like super tortured and humiliated before he dies, having to sit there and watch his dad drink the blood again. Well, uh, two points that I have to mention about that. The uh, uh, first one being about Garrosh. That would have been a fine choice for his character, but the problem is that Gul'dan and Garrosh in this universe have barely interacted with each other, and Gul'dan doesn't really yep. know much about Garrosh other than him being this mysterious stranger who, for a reason, is opposed to <clears throat> his, fa- his father drinking the demon blood. Even though he eventually finds out that Gerash is Grom- Gromash's, son- Gromash's son. But, like I, like I said, I, I don't think Gerash and Gul'dan have as much in common as Gromash and Gul'dan. And I think it's far mm-hmm. more effective this way, in my honest opinion. Yeah, I get you. I get you. I just Once again, it's just me wanting to Stick that knife in garage and twist it one more time. I'm really bummed he's dead and I got again. Hmm. Uh, well, you can go to his uh, corpse and slash spit. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, in regards to Kilrog, um, I, uh, 
much of what we knew about his character we knew from the Beyond the Dark Portal novel because pri prior to that he wasn't really mentioned that much outside of in passing as being the chieftain of the Bleed Bleeding Hollow. And basically in Beyond the Dark Portal and a little bit in Tides of Darkness is he's this old warrior who has seen the, a lot of bloodshed and is uh, probably the, the most honorable person in the Horde outside of Doomhammer and is also tired of war and look <clears throat> looking for peace. And Warlords of Draenor we see this young impetuous Kirog, Kirog in contrast. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's an age thing. Like maybe he just it's because he hasn't gone through all of the the first and second wars. Yeah. Anyway, that's why he didn't become like that person. Um, that's interesting. I I hadn't considered that that comparison. But I mean, I guess I could see why because you know he's younger. We saw him in Lo the Lord of the War series. You know, kill his dad. Even that's <laughs> supposedly what was supposed to happen. It's, the the I, I, I it's for people who like watch Game of Thrones or read A Song of Ice and Fire. It always reminds me of. Like Kilrog and the Bleeding Hollows visions always remind me of like Melisandre, mm. where she like they she believes she knows some kind of future, but you as like the player or the viewer you're always like, is it that or do you just want it to be that and you're gonna try and make it that or is it that really the future? Like that's how I felt about Kilrog in this, right? right. Like cause supposedly he saw his death and he knew it was gonna be like this, and um, I guess drinking the blood was part of that. But I don't know. I, I'm, so did you? How did you feel about him? Like just completely willingly going with Gul'dan? Um. I mean, uh, it sort of makes sense considering the vision he saw. Even though, technique technically, Blizzard said that Marat doesn't know his vision. We saw it in Lords of War, with him uh, dying sort of gloriously at the hand of the Alliance and Horde, and it. Yeah. Uh, Sort of remi reminds me of how he actually died in our universe, where he uh, basically died buying time for Nerzul to escape and op open his portals. Uh, and it uh, sort of uh, brings to mind the idea that Kilrog, first and foremost, would think about his clan or the survival of his people first before himself. But I'm not entirely sure if that also applies to his current char character in Warlords. Yeah, because it's because uh, it's a good point. Because there's not a lot of unfortunately, there's not a lot of kill rock story in six point two. Like there's like I've gone through the entire. I don't, mm. You said you watched the the videos that I made out of it. I don't know if Most you watched the six point two. Yeah, because I've done the entire garrison campaign in six point two. There's the really there's one quest where he's involved in it, but it's really about the cipher of damnation in that quest where they all they all kind of are really you know leading up to the finding it, but um. It's not like you don't really like, learn anything new about him. He does kind of lament the fact that his like his home is being attacked in that one cinematic, which I guess like va validates that idea that he's always about his people. Um, but yeah, other than that, you just kind of show up and fight him in the raid, and he doesn't doesn't really do much. He like his people are still completely with him. There are some who haven't drank the blood yet, but they're still totally totally down with it. Mm, right. So I guess he is trying to do it because he thinks this is the only way he can save his people. I mean. He does kind of say that. Uh, do you also care to talk a little about a little bit about uh, six point two as well? Um, sure. I'll have to. I have to. I would have to say the story for six point two. I really like it. I like it a lot. It's more. It's basically like, hey, Shadow Moon Valley of Outland. Now it's Tenan Jungle. Like that's kind of like how I, how it came off to me like right away. Um, you know, it's all about the garrison campaigns, all about finding the Cypher of Damnation, which if you played BC, you know that whole, there's a really extensive storyline in Shadow Moon Valley about that, that I really liked. One of the few big quest chains in BC that I really enjoyed, that they brought back, which I was really happy about. Mm. Um, you learn about Iskar and certain parts of the Arakoa who are not happy that you... A, got empowered by Terok, and B, weren't, like, killed and became, like, the vessel that he used to be reborn. Um, Gul'dan approaches them and is like, hey, dudes, I can make you fly again. Just drink this blood. And this guy's like, hey, sounds good. He chugs it, and then he becomes a pure, kind of pure, like a corrupted pure Arakoa again. Right. That's really cool. I'm, I'm interested in that because the fight in the raid, like, not to spoil it, but it seems kind of like... He drank the blood, but isn't still under Gul'dan's control. Like, he kind of became empowered by it, but still is kind of just doing whatever he wants. Like, that's how the fight looks like it's going to be going. 
Mm. Um, because he like that whole the whole part in that raid where you're fighting him and the Arakoa are like in its own corner. Gul'dan's forces are are not there. It's just all of his dudes. And there's like some some sound files I've heard before where Gul'dan's like, "What are you doing, Iskar?" And blah 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 blah. And Iskar's like, "Fuck you, basically. I can do whatever I want." Um, so Iskar is doing that. Um, yeah, all leading up to the Cipher of Damnation, which was a pretty cool finale. I, I liked it. I wish I wish there was some kind of cinematic to complete it, because it felt like it was a really important moment on the PTR. But, um, yeah, I mean, overall it looks great. Tanan Jungle looks really fun. Um, I wish it was more like the Isle of Thunder and less, like, Timeless Isle. Because the time asylum to me was always like, hey, there's a whole lot of things to do, and absolutely none of it matters. Like, that's how it ten- I mean, I guess it was kind of by design to be like that, really. Right. But I don't, I'm, I was never a big fan of time asylum, really. So, unfortunately, it's more like that. It's, they're adding more, more reputations in, and not any new ways of getting reputation other than grinding, which is yay, and like a weekly quest where you have to grind a lot of things. And then you get reputation. Well, but sorry, go ahead. No, that's really much it. Besides that, the raid looks really good, and I'm really excited to try it out. Uh, what I wanted to say is, uh, I think it uh, would have gone well if they would have done a thing sort of similar to what they did with the Sunwell in uh, 2.4, where basically you're working with the Shattered Sun Offensive and you're slowly, slowly retake, retaking the island before finally attacking the raid itself. I think that would would have been a cool to do uh, in Tanan Jungle, but not as part of the Garrison campaign, but uh, in a cohesive effort with the rest of the server, because that's one, that's really one of the things that's missing the most from uh, uh, World of Draenor, because it's missing the multiplayer aspect after, out of MMORPG. Oh yeah, definitely, especially with Garrisons. Um, yeah, it's... I, I like that idea. I do. I think it would have been cool if they implemented it. That being said, I do like how basically kind of like the gist of the introduction of the story is like, hey, if you're Horde, Duratan is taking all of the Frost Wolves and they're attacking the, the gates. And that's how you manage to slip around on a ship. If your alliance is like, hey, um, I think it's Maladar. Exarch Maladar is taking all of the Draenei and they're attacking the gates. Which again brings up the question of two stories happening at the same time. Granted, they are both there. Um, fighting the Draenei and the Frostwolf works. It's just like the introduction makes it seem like one is championing championing the attack there over the other when it right. kind of isn't. But um, you know that being said, I do like that aspect where it's like all of your forces are distracting them by trying to invade the gate, and you run in and establish your outpost, and then your outpost is constantly being attacked. Like just like once again, like Shadowmoon Valley, there is always infernals falling inside your base that are like attacking the NPCs. Very much a Shadowmoon Valley vibe. Yeah, um, one little detail that uh, of Warlords uh, in regards to the Frostwolf clan that I guess kind of worked me, but uh, I guess we can consider it a retcon, was how in pretty much every single novel that brought up this point or talked about it, the Frostwolves are described as one of the smallest clans of orcs ever. Basi- basically... If I remember correctly, Rise of the Horde basically says that it's just composed of about 80 people. Oh, yeah. Mm, interesting. I, didn't rem- I don't remember that. So... I mean, Warlords kind of does that, too. There's not a lot of them. Yeah, Frostfire Ridge definitely has a bit of that feel because uh, because all of the Frostwolves are pretty much elite warriors, so so to say, and Gunnar's group is the most elite out of, out of the clan, but the... Ide- idea that uh, basically the Horde allied with the Frostwolves while the Alliance allied with the Draenei, I think it's pretty obvious who drew the short stick here. <laughs> right. Uh, and also, like you mentioned before, the idea that uh, one of them would be championing the attack on the on Tanan jungle and the Frostwolves doing so with only about 80 people out of those more than half about say half our children and women or stuff like that yeah i I think it would have made sense to in that moment be like hey we're working with the horde or the alliance like and i wish they would have addressed that in the actual introduction quest it's just kind of like hey agra's like hey my husband's down there fighting a bunch of guys can you go help him or i forget who 
Oh, it's Urel. Hey, Maladar's down there fighting a bunch of guys. Can you go help him? I wish it would have been like, hey, we don't have enough forces, obviously, because there's a ton of orcs in there still. Yeah. Let's work together. Yeah, that's, like I said, that's also ties back a bit about how I feel. They should have dragged it a little bit more because it doesn't make sense that you make this full-on assault on the Iron Horde. And granted, you beat them a lot of times, but it's still pretty much the old horde except with a lot more technologically advanced and now they also have fell magic and you're winning <laughs> right yes no, one of the biggest problems i do have is how it seems like you really really just raffle stomp them at every step along the way like and it's just even with fell magic you're just kind of like hey you're just doing whatever you want there's a distraction you're into non now and you're wrecking house yeah yeah pr pretty much uh, although, I guess, historically, so to say, uh, orcs have a tendency of missing uh, subtle, subtle operations. For example, us sneaking into Tanan, or I can think of a few other examples in, uh, uh, like, the with the old horde and such. Yeah, that's a good point. So I wonder if, um, so I mean, that's basically all of Tanan. I mean, the whole... You don't really learn this in the storyline. The storyline is basically basically about trying to get the cipher, but once you get into the raid, it's kind of like, oh shit, Gold Dance Summon in Archimon. We can't let that happen. And I guess if you look at any point in 6.2, you find out he's the final boss. So it's some somehow it happens. Uh, I have a spoilery question, but I guess it's not that much of a spoiler since he's already in the Dungeon Journal. But isn't Matter right. of Death dead? Yes. Um, so yeah, Manoroth's dead. The fight, the way it works, I think, and I don't know if they've actually tested him yet, but um, from the way it looks like, based on the few sound files that haven't been locked behind stuff so they don't want to give away the ending, he's dead. There's, like, his skeleton is there when you go into the fi into that fight. Gul'dan's there resurrecting him with, like, these really weird fell spires that are, like, channeling fell magic into him. As the fight goes on, it reminds me of, like, a reverse um, in Burning Crusade, in Hellfire Citadel, the raid against the Pit Lord. Oh, What's his name? Magtheridon. Yes, it's like a reverse Magtheridon where you, in Magtheridon's case, you fight the guys to free him, and you fight him. In this case, it's like you start the fight, you fight Gul'dan and his forces. Not actually Gul'dan himself, he's just there in the background channeling magic. You fight Gul'dan's forces, resurrecting him. As you drive them away, Manoroth resurrected. He's still, like, really crazily, like, undead-looking. Mm. Like, you can see the bones through his body and stuff like that. And then you fight him and you kill him. Yeah. Uh, one little thing about 6.2 that also kind of annoyed me. Uh, I get how the Alliance base is basically where Honor Hold is and the Horde base is basically where Fromar is, which is a nice parallel. I, ra I rather like that. But... Blind's base is positioned probably in the most logical place it could be, but the Horde base mm, is positioned between the Throne of Kill Jaden and Hellfire Citadel. <laughs> yep, and the Dark Portal Yeah. on the opposite side where Gul'dan's doing shenanigans there. Yeah, uh, so uh, probably would have been better to just make uh, a common a common base between the alliance between the alliance and the horde in within that storyline and it would also make uh, sense in this in the if we're going by the parallels between beyond the dark portal and warlords of draenor because at the time of beyond the dark portal there was only honor hold and no fromar yeah definitely yeah because there's really not any like story where it's like hey Volmar, or whatever the Horde base is called, I think that's what it is. Volmar is getting attacked, will help them, kind of like how it was in Burning Crusade. So it, it makes sense. There's like no conflict between the Horde and the Alliance. I don't know why they wouldn't more actively team up. Mm. Right. Uh... But yeah, so that's uh, Estenon Jungle. I have no, we have no idea how the raid's going to end with Archimonde. We just know that at toward the end of the fight, he takes you to the Twisting Nether, which. Hopefully that looks cool because it's gonna be like our first like look into it like in the game like the like the actual game. So um, I don't know I don't know what they're gonna do there. I don't know if he's gonna like take you near Argus. I don't know what is gonna happen, but he takes you into the Twisting Nether, which I'm super excited to see what uh, happens in there. 
You mean you don't like the twisting nether that you can see in Outland where you basically fly off too far and, and it's just a sunny sky? <laughs> yep. Uh, yes, yeah, that's the best version of the twisting nether. <laughs> where you go so far enough then it's sun, sunny skies. That's the canon. Uh, how very zen. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's um, pretty much all that uh, we can talk about story-wise in Warlords of Draenor. Yeah, um, I have one final question for you. I know my answer, but if any, who would you like to see, assuming that something happens and we somehow need to like escape back to Azeroth as the planet's either exploding or, or if we beat if we beat Archimon and we're just going home, who, if any, do you think should come back with the Horde of the Alliance from who we've met on this Draenor? Well, I imagine Irel should, because they've already spent this much time developing her. Yep. Um, I, I imagine if that happens, that Durotan will, just so they can avoid the, tra the quote-unquote tragedy of Fro, quote-unquote, losing his father again. Um, and I mean, hey, Grom makes it through the raid. He's in the Archimon fight. He doesn't die that we know of. I mean, it would be awesome if he did come back, but I'm I'm not sure what exactly he would do in our universe story-wise. Oh yeah, I don't I don't necessarily think he should come back because I think the alliance should naturally have a giant problem with it if he did. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a tough question. Uh, can you say your answer and let me think about it a little more? Oh, I definitely think Yorel should come back, like you said, and I completely agree. They've built her up super super hardcore. I, and it's because, I mean, this is my terrible streak that I have in my body. I want Duratan to die in front of Thrall again, because I want Thrall to be upset. Because <laughs> I'm, I've been done with Thrall since Cataclysm. I'm like, you need to either die or go retire, because I'm sick of your shit. I want him to go away. I mean, I don't hate, I don't have any hatred toward actual Duratan. I think he's fairly, like, milk toast. He's not that interesting. He's just kind of, he's the noble orc, like his son is. Like, that's, like, his deal, and that's... While that's cool, I guess, compared to, like, a bunch of the terrible orcs, it's not really that interesting, in my opinion. Yeah. But, um, so, you know, Duratan, I, if he died, that part of me that hates Thrall would like it, but I wouldn't care if he made it. Um, Draka, maybe she should come back. I mean, I have no problem with that. Um, it just depends on how much of Draenor, like, gets damaged or destroyed, or if it doesn't at all. That's how much I think we'll find out who will be coming back with us. Because if Draenor ends up going the path of, like, Outland, I could see, like, everyone there literally just bolting for the Dark Portal and trying to get through. Yeah, that's also basically what happened in Beyond the Dark Portal. When yeah. the portal collapsed, everyone tried to brush through it as quickly as with, when the world was starting to collapse. You know what I mean. Yeah. So when they're trying to, like, make this callback to all of this old stuff, it, if they did that, it would completely make sense based on their, like, goal. Yeah. Um. I really just want Urel, honestly. I want Urel to make it back and join the Alliance. Because, A, we need more Draenei characters. B, I really like Urel, despite some people hating her. But, um, yeah, I just want Urel to make it. Please. <laughs> I personally... Uh, now that I think about it, I also want uh, Rashad to come back and uh, have uh, in the ne in the next expansion ha uh, him, Lord Walker Cho, and Harrison Jones and Magni Bronzebeard have a thing together somehow. Oh my God, they're like the lore squad. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. I would a short story where you're, where Rashad comes back back to our universe and like goes to Outland and sees the Arakoa there. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, uh, the problem with that. Uh, that I see with that is outside of Velen and the Draenei, like you've mentioned, everybody else in Draenor thinks uh, we're just strangers from a faraway place. Yep, but I mean, there are a couple of, I mean, there, we do, Outland does, like, have its weird version of, like, the Order of the Awakened, which is the, uh, you know, the, quote, good Arakoa, that few of them, uh, what are they called? I don't know if they're called Outcast. They're not the Outcasts, those are the bad ones in BC. But, like, the, the few good ones, I would just like to see I don't oh, know. Oh, right, just, right, right. The yeah. ones worshipping the light in Shadrath. Yeah, I'd just like to see Rashad meet them. I think that'd be an interesting storyline. Hmm. Of course, it wouldn't happen because it would be like an old thing. It's maybe a short story. It would also be absolutely brilliant if Terok would uh, also come 
in some way probably i don't know possessing someone and would then unite the Araco and outland that would be pretty cool i would that would be one of the few times i'd be fine with their whole stupid dimension split universe travel nonsense not even to get into we haven't talked about it and i don't think we should i think we should talk about it maybe in the next episode the revelation about the there is only one Burning Legion. The Twisting Nether anchors everyone's souls, and apparently there's only one Archimonde and only one... All of that shenanigans. Have you been looking at that? I saw your tweets about it. It's very confusing, because we we were, A, given this piece of information, which some people are like, look, we kind of knew that, and in one way I'm like, yeah, you're right, but then it's also, they tried to clarify a bunch of stuff, which made it even worse, and then a new developer added his two cents that basically was like, hey... All of this isn't true. It's how you think it is. So it's... God. You know, they, their stated goal in Warlords was like, we don't want to make it too confusing for the storyline. You really don't think about it. It's not that bad. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, by the way, there's like one on... He's across all universes. <laughs> um, it, it also reminds me in your, in your PTR videos of 6.2 with... Uh, Doom Lord Kazak uh, basically saying his same speech uh, that he said during the during uh, Burning Crusade about how he remembers the Third War. Uh, kind of makes me kind of makes me wonder if they plan on not t on not changing that. Yeah, because at first I was like, obviously this is just copy and pasted, but maybe they're maybe they're doing it to be lazy. I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't, I honestly don't know why they're doing it, but I mean, I guess. We could get into that more deeply if you wanted to step on that into that minefield because I still don't know all of my thoughts on that. But um, but that's not for this video. I think is there anything else you wanted to talk about? I had my last question for you, and uh, yeah, I think I have everything. I've, I've said everything I've wanted to say about the overall story. Uh, one, I guess one little one little question that we can both answer is. Who is your favorite warlord of Draenor? Hmm. Gul'dan's not a warlord, so I can't pick him. Uh. Well, I think. Let's see. Uh, do are we counting Duratan and Azuka Fury as warlords? Sure. Um. All right. I was just curious. I think. I really. I think Ner'zhul was the most true, mm. portrayed the most true, if that makes sense, in this expansion, to how he was. I think Grom, they tried to, like, make him, like, fancy, and they kind of just, <laughs> I don't know if they really succeeded or not. Uh, Blackhand, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I've, I don't have a problem with where Blackhand went, but, you know, he wasn't super, super interesting to me. I think Ner'zhul, they've stayed most true to the lore he seemed threatening in his moment that he needed to, even though I don't like that and did have to die. I think the manner in which Ner'zhul died and how he kind of initially started out as having to force his hand to do this, but then went power crazy, that's exactly the same as our universe. Right. I'd have to pick Ner'zhul. Uh, well, I'm not going to cheat and also pick Ner'zhul since he's my favorite character. I'm not going to cheat because I haven't done Shadow Moon Valley myself, so I only mm. know what you're telling me, and uh, it's not really that. I wouldn't really feel alright just judging the character ba based on that. I want to do Shadow Moon Valley myself. Um, yeah. On honestly, I think I like Cargaf the Cargaf the most, and mostly because of his. Uh, Lord, uh, Lords of War video, to be honest. About really, War. um, he doesn't really have that much of a pre that much of a presence in Warlords of Draenor outside of uh, you only killed ninety nine people, uh, and the fact that he randomly died in Hymo. Uh, but I <laughs> but uh, I like this uh, new shade that they gave to Kargath in uh, Warlords of Draenor as opposed to his previous character, where. In the in the previous lore, he was a member of the Sh of, of the Shadow Council, but eventually he left when Dur when Go Doomhammer slaughtered them all, and uh, he was loyal to Nerzul. But then when he re realized that Nerzul was basically shitting all over him, he left. Uh, 
that's pretty much the extent extent of his character in the previous lore and i really like how they developed his story and the story of the shattered hand in the lords of war and in warlords of draenor yeah he definitely was he definitely didn't get enough time i think he should have he deserved it yeah he was included as with all the other big boys and he kind of didn't get as much screen time yeah uh but okay then so yeah, this was the first episode of whatever <laughs> Tyranor and Necroxus barf out lore po opinions on the internet. We'll uh, find a fancy name generator on the internet. <laughs> right, exactly. So um, did we decide, this is like behind the scenes, did we decide if it was going on my channel or your channel first? I don't care. Uh, your channel first. Okay, so yeah, you're watching this on my channel, Tyranor. You should go listen to him and his stuff. He does lore facts. It's pretty cool. Tyranor, what is your channel? Because I honestly don't remember it off the top of my head. There's numbers in it. So that's what's confusing uh, me. Basically, my channel, because uh, I was an idiot when at the time when I made it, and I didn't think that using my full in-game name would be okay. It's, on, it's only T-E-E-I-R-1. But if you go to you to Tyranor, that's also my account, and it's basically just, hey, the main channel is over here. Right, cool, awesome, fantastic. So there you go. Uh, any parting, Tyranor? Uh, follow us on Twitter. Yes, definitely. Where are you at on Twitter? Where can we find you? At Tyranor. You can. Uh, you probably know how to spell it. I don't know. Yes, T E E. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> T. <laughs> Damn it! I just had it because I was looking at your YouTube account. T E, T -E, -E I R O N O R. Right. Yeah, and it's also probably going to be in the description of the video. We guess exactly. I am at Necroxus9, of course. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Or listening, at least. Um, yeah, this was cool. I'm glad we got to do something again, because I haven't done anything since whatever happened with that other show that I was on, I was on once. But uh, It's complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> uh. All right, so cool. Uh, see all of you later. Yep, bye-bye.